Oh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it is 9.08 p.m. Central Central Standard Time, CST, March 20th, uh, the year of our Lord, 2024. Here we are. Another another episode of the weekly album, the longest running, pretty much always weekly live streaming podcast video thing on the uh, YouTubes. How are you, Barry? Uh, I'm waiting for spring. Patiently, very yeah. patiently. <laughs> Yeah, it, the weather's really jacking me up. It was 70 degrees here the other day. It's going to be 29 to, or 27 tonight. <laughs> yeah, we've been dealing with the same garbage here, too. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, We're going to supposedly have a blizzard this weekend. I mean, it's just kind of like... And then it's supposed to get back up to 50 degrees, like, shortly after that. It's just uh, ridiculous. Tonight's uh, drink of choice is the... Strawberry Startup Mountain Dew Kickstart. Um, it's for starting up strawberries or whatever. Uh, okay. And since uh, since uh, I see Cookie Kid just brought it up in the old chat, um, as time goes on, we continue to lose uh, some of the old guard of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, there aren't many left. Yeah. Um, Jim Ward. Uh, who was an employee of TSR for many years, uh, many years after Gary left, actually. Gary Gygax left. Uh, an author, uh, game designer. Um, uh, his, uh, in, in, in Gary Gygax's home game, um, he played the wizard Draw Midge, which was Jim Ward spelled backwards. Um, from what I understand, uh, and all, uh, and all, all, I mean, nobody ever really had anything negative to say about him. Uh, it seemed like he was a, a good guy. It seemed like he was a, a person that um, definitely kind of tried to hold uh, TSR together uh, as it was circling the drain. Um, and uh, after it got shut down, he spent a lot of time. Uh, writing books and also um, working on his own uh, games and self. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I remember, um, I don't know, it was several years ago, but either I, I, I think I might have reached out as I'd like to friend him on Facebook. I don't think he reached out himself, but he accepted my friendship. And, and I thought that was really cool because, you know, he was one of the originals that was still around. And like him and Tim Cask, uh, and Tim's still around, thankfully. Um, Tom Wom, you know, like going back in those days. Um, but uh, uh, he, uh, uh, and then like I remember, I don't remember what it was. He had he had uh, he had posted something about requesting help with something, and I and I remember I gave him some advice. I mean, not like it was like some major league advice, but just pointing in the right direction. And he sent me um, like a direct message and like talked to me briefly for like maybe five minutes. And I thought that was really cool. And I was like, wow, I'm talking. I mean, like years and years and years ago when there, before there was time to do Facebook messaging or real time messaging between people back and forth um, on the Necromancer Games uh, forums, I remember... Uh, uh, Gary Gygax actually was on there because he was working on some books for them. And I remember he posted a few things and we were able to like post back and then he would respond to our posts. That was closest I ever got to talking to him. But and I thought that was really cool. This was, this was obviously cooler and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Um, he was, uh, he seemed like, like I said, seemed like he, he, he'd been battling health problems for a long time. Um, you know, you know, he had had, uh, some issues or whatever in and out of, you know, uh, the hospitals and stuff like that. But, um, 
yeah, he just he's one of the he's gone. I mean, but like I said, didn't seem like, and it seems weirdly, um, like timing wise, since Gary Con is going on right now, you know, it's just kind of like one of those things where. What, you think he played it? <laughs> no, no. It's, it's one of those things, right? You know? So, yeah. I mean, it just sucks. But, I mean, Father Time is undefeated. So, um, all of us can only dodge the coffin for so long. So. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Anyway, there you go. I mean, um, He helped create stuff that uh, uh, that literally millions upon millions of people enjoy. So you just kind of have to give it up. I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, long live Tim Kask. Uh, right you are there. I think he's the last of the dinosaurs. I mean, I can't think of... Well, um, Elminster is still with us. Um uh and the guy who created and, and there's i mean i know like zeb cook is still around i know frank menser is still around but frank menser has completely and totally like removed himself from like the D, &D world he is mm -hmm. he is very very annoyed with the surviving <laughs> guy the surviving guy gaxes um yeah. he is uh uh and i'm trying to think of anybody else jeff grubb is still around i mean he did a lot of like the 80s stuff um i'm trying to think i mean there's still a few i mean there's still a lot of them i mean like but not the but the originals like the originals the the, the guys that crawled out of uh gary's basement right you know I mean, they're just they're they are they are few and far between now so It's a shame what that did to our friendship, that whole thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, um, I think, uh, yeah. So she, we could some of the classic artists. Um, uh, I mean, Jeff Easley, I think, is still around. Oh. Um, uh, and he's he's one of the uh, originals. Um. And then I'm trying to remember. Oh man, I'm trying to remember the others. Um, like besides Jeff Easley, that did a lot of the old. Uh, um, did a lot of the old school um, module covers and things like that. Um, gosh, I, I, I'm, I'm just dropping a. I'm dropping a. a trying to blank here. Um, Oh, why can't I think of these things? Um, uh, what well, does matter? It's, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it is and what it is, what it is. Um, uh, Larry Elmore, he's still alive, but I saw him at a, uh, I saw him at a, uh, 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 I, I saw Larry Elmore at a convention a few years back, and and he um, he is definitely uh, um, I mean older. I mean, and I don't mean that to be mean or anything like that. I mean, he was still signing stuff and everything like that. But obviously, I think his his painting days are behind him. Um, you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so. But that's enough depressingness. Uh, uh, oh, excuse me. What if Clyde Caldwell is still alive? Here, that's. I mean, I'm not. This is just a. This is just me trying to remember these people. Clyde Caldwell, yeah, still with us. Thank goodness. He had um, Clyde Caldwell. I mean, I'm trying to think if like if you had to like. Uh, um some of his more famous uh he always seemed to paint the girls in the the chainmail bikinis um uh everybody got their specialty yeah you yeah, know i will say that he he seemed to do that 
Um, I'm trying to remember. I think he did um, one of the Forgotten Realms front covers. And if you ever played the, the game Curse of the Azure Bonds, um, he uh, did the uh, um, either the read the book or whatever. He did the front picture of the the, the red haired woman with the sword that had the weird um, uh, like dragon person, dragon man person behind her. Or something like that. But yeah. Um I haven't I haven't uh I haven't dug into the old art much in a long, long while. But oh, and he did the um Clyde Caldwell did the uh if you are familiar with the uh Dragonlance. His his is the one of the elf that has like the is touching the the orb of dragon kind that's like draining his soul or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, and and the green dragon is uh is is behind it and you know, behind him like you know being all mysterious and whatever. But yeah, but anyway, but anyway. Um. Anyway, what's new with you, man? Not much. I got in the yard a little bit earlier this week when it was nice out. Start getting that ready. Got a poison ivy back there. I getting rid of. Well, yeah. But I, I had to get some tree and shrubs down to get to it. So I got that far. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you just leave it poison. alone? Let it grow. Because it, it's starting to overtake back there. A rose Le bush. leaves of three leave them be leaves I will, of four until i poison them. <laughs> leaves of four <laughs> eat some more yeah yeah uh, and i got a rose bush that grew up a tree and started coming down and it fucked me up <laughs> and it got me all sorts of ways but i was trying to get it there get her out the the rose bush yeah it like grew up the tree and it start wrapping around and straggling it and then it just grew down in a couple spots and like i was with a pole saw trying to get in there, but the it kept wrapping around my arm and shit. <laughs> yeah. Fun day. <laughs> yeah. And then uh went over a uh, campfire with the uh the neighbor, had a couple interesting conversations with him about guns. <laughs> yeah. But, hmm. uh, I think. Oh, going to a llama farm next uh, couple of weeks. A what farm? Llama farm. Oh, I thought you said lava farm. I was like, uh, are you going to buy a llama? No, I'll probably buy some wool, though. I'm interested to see how they shear them and all that, make it in the wool. They got alpacas and llamas and a couple other animals there. Pretty sure they use a knife. I'm sure they use shears or yeah, probably uh, electric. Some sort of bladed instrument I believe mm -hmm. is yeah. used. Mm -hmm. That would be my uh, my. That would be what would I I would surmise. Yeah. Um. Fair enough. Um. Uh, Try to think. Nothing else. Picked up a game. I haven't played it yet though. Away mission. Star Trek away missions. From uh, Gale Force Nine. Oh yeah. Started reading a rule book. I don't under. It's a thirty-two page rule book. It's not a hard game. <laughs> it really is. It's Sixteen of the thirty-two pages are probably the rules. <laughs> you know, the rest of it's fluff and you know uh, a bunch of other nonsense. <laughs> I don't understand the rule books. Why companies make rule books like this today? You know, just get to the game. <laughs> I couldn't tell you either. Yeah. I don't understand publishing companies with the rule books to begin with. You know, it's the first thing people see of your game. It should be the thing you pay attention to the most, other than the actual gameplay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Instead of just trying to, you know, your marketing bullshit to sell as many as you can. For me, I'd rather do numbers over time instead of one shot. But that's just me. Those, I mean, 
I mean, do you think it's, I mean, as far as the rule books go, what's the toughest rule book you ever had to read that isn't a war game? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> 51st State, the original edition, the first edition. That was the toughest fucking game I've ever learned to play. Which one? The original version of 51st State. Gotcha. Um, just because it was a shit rule book. Uh, actually, a lot of Portal games were shit rule books in the beginning. I don't know how they are now. Um, try it. Other than war games, um. I don't know. There's been a couple dry ones. I know, like, you know, Powerline, that was a dry roll book, but it wasn't tough. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think. I mean, uh, there were games back in the day. Oh man, now I got it. now I'm gonna have to dig deep to um there are absolutely games back in the day that that needed um like and this is before the you know the heyday, you know. Yeah. That that like um the translation that they got was not great. And they it was described as needing they need an English to English translation kind of thing. Yeah, so and of course now I'm not gonna be able to remember the name of the game or anything like that. But I remember um a few of those that were just like just really bad. And not like, you know, it just you know, they weren't trying to be bad. It was yeah. just, you know, before. I mean, like it it just uh there was before that they, they just would have um stuff like that that it just wouldn't be vetted really well and it wouldn't be um you know no, no there there wasn't any uh um attempt to like you know try to you know because it just was like okay we'll just you know have now i mean this is before i mean now i mean of course i don't think you can really like to get a good translation you shouldn't use like google translate or something like that but it's definitely is something where i i've heard that publishers will you know they'll they'll use like Google Translate to help, and then they'll okay. after they do that, they'll send it to a person who actually is bilingual, and then they'll be able to, yeah. you know, hammer out the, the issues or whatever. Um, XCOM, XCOM is a bad rule book. <laughs> uh, I hate that yeah. whole system that Fantasy Flight does with the two rule book thing to begin with, but that was particularly bad. Yeah, I know. I was never a fan of that either. Like, oh, here's here's the first rule book for like just getting your feet wet. Now here's the rule book that'll tell you actually how to play. Yeah, yeah. That, actually, the Star Trek game does something similar to that. I never really understood that either. It was annoying. Mm -hmm. That uh, that Robin the Adventures of Robin, it wasn't bad. It was just, like I don't like again. I don't like them tutorial game thing. You know, just give me one rule book with all the rules. <laughs> yeah, instead of doing this tutorial thing for three or four games and then getting into the game itself. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. I actually find most war game their rule books pretty good. You know. They're dense, but they're they're actually written pretty well. For me, I'm technical, but you know, with schematics and all that, for handbooks and all that, you know. But I prefer them. At least you can reference all of them pretty easily, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Instead of hunting through six pages of you know this phase. <sighs> Yeah, I thought we'd be past all that by this time with the rule books. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess not. Um I think uh do you remember the old uh do you remember the old YouTube channel Bored to Death? Yeah. I think Luca is gonna join us. Okay. Um a little bit later.
you know, he he was the guy who ran that YouTube channel way back in yeah. the day. Yeah. They had a the store up there too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh Quebec, was it? I can't remember now. I don't Somewhere know. up there in Canada. And he's on, you can ask him. Yeah. His brother, we, we, we can get Giancarlo? to the bottom. <laughs> Giancarlo, yeah. There you go. We we can get to the bottom of it. And, yeah, we can. Um, they made a couple games, didn't they? Yeah, he's got one on Kickstarter right now. I don't think it's gonna fund though. It's got five days to go, and he needs like eight grand. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a meeting with them to describe. Hey, take it down. You know, realize <laughs> what 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 you need to do, what you need to change, and then relaunch. And then, yeah. and then we'll relaunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, use a different option. Um, you been watching anything new? Any new movies? Any new TV shows you've seen that you want to tell me about? Cool. Shogun. I've been watching Shogun. I, I like that. And I, I've heard lots of really, really positive things about it. I haven't started watching it yet. It's one of those. I just started the other day. I'm up to like the fourth episode. It's pretty good. How many episodes are out now? Is that they're out with four, or I mean, is it more? I mean, I'm up to four. I think I'm one or two behind. Um, gotcha. So I'm going to wait a little bit to get back into it, but. I like to watch them like three or four at a time. Yeah, yeah I like I like get, letting them all come out and then I'll I'll dive in, you know, that kind of thing. I watched something else. What the hell was it? Oh, it's on Apple. Um, oh, it's about space and parallel universes. Give me a minute. I saw a thing about that. It, it, it's like an ad that pops up, but I'm 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 almost. I'm watching. I'm on like three episode three or episode four of Masters of Air. I'm getting through yeah. That. I finished um, that. I haven't finished it yet. I mean, but obviously, you know, I will. Obviously, it's it's just it's it's slow. It's it's slow rowing right now for me. I mean, it's just I want to be able to give it attention to actually watch it, kind of thing, you know. And um, yeah. and I don't want to have it as background noise. But then again, you know, it's like um, my wife and I are watching. Uh, the show from when we get a chance and we're and then um i'm watching uh resident alien which is yeah me and jen are watching that that's so good it is yeah. it is so good we're only like four episodes or five episodes into well, well my son and i got like four or five episodes into a, a season one and then my daughter wanted to watch so we're re we went back and we're re-watching oh, okay and um so you know, we're, we're getting back to where we were. Um, probably not appropriate for my son, but um, he wanted to watch Peacemaker after the Peacemaker character came out on Mortal Kombat, so we've been watching that too. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of all over the place with their stuff right now, watching uh, shows and whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. Jen's been watching a lot of Deadly Catch again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did they she catch, goes. It's, did they catch it? Uh, apparently, <laughs> there's 20 seasons of it, so <laughs> I'm hoping they do eventually. <laughs> I just, I, I can't. I find it. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm as much to blame as anyone when it comes to, oh, excuse me, formulaic television, right? I mean, like, I, I mean. The stuff I watch can be just as formulaic as anything, right? Um, you know, I I will, uh, but I was telling somebody, um, like the other day, I was like, you know, I can't even really, um, get into, uh, watching. Like I used to really watch. I used to <laughs> used to like watching. Um, uh, I can't even talk. I used to really enjoy watching uh, um, last week tonight, right? Um, so it was one of those things where, um, I but now when I watch it, it just it feels like it's so like I said, it's so formulaic. Yeah. You know, it's just like it's like you know, it's like something serious, something serious, something serious, and joke. Something serious, something serious, something serious, and joke. And then, and then I really got annoyed with the fact that I was like sitting there and I was, um, 
I was, I was, I was sitting there thinking about like the, the whole, that, that whole process or whatever. And then like, if you're knowledgeable about the thing they're talking about and you're like, well, wait a minute, that's not even like the complete truth about that situation. You just, you left out a bunch of stuff. And then you see where people, other people call them out on that show. And then they actually yeah. say something like, well, we're not a news show. We're, we're a yeah. comedy show. Or if, yeah. Entertainment. We're entertainment. entertainment. So <laughs> we, we don't have to actually tell like the correct truth and whatever. And I, that really annoyed me. I was just kind of like, that seems, that seems kind of shady and shitty. Um, well, they all say their own biases. I mean, they all do, whether it be any of the political comedian shows. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It just, that, that really, that really annoyed me. Um, but you know, it's like, and I tried watching it the other day and I was like, oh yeah, okay, here we go. And they're taking apart whatever thing they're going to take apart now. And then I was just kind of like, uh, I don't want to watch this anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not funny anymore. Not fun anymore. It's mm -hmm. not funny anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. other than that, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, uh, nothing crazy going on in the world. I, um, so I went to, uh, I went to, um, there's a, there, I, I it's, I don't know, I, you know, I got a grievance, but I, but I want to wait for, wait for Aldi to get here because he enjoys them. Damn, is he? Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Is he at the pinball thing? Is he not? I wonder, I wonder if he's even going to be here today. I Almost. think that's over. I think that was this weekend. He uh, did post a couple pictures from it. Yeah, I saw. Uh, he's probably just out with dinner with Michelle, you know. Give him time. <laughs> Give him time. <laughs> Actually, I should be bugging Rakano because he said he was going to show up. Antony. Antony. Oh, oh, yeah. Kabuki said first Marsha. That was a horrible rule book. I forgot about that one. It's a shame. I loved Robinson Crusoe, and I liked the space theme. But that game was not good. <laughs> I think he's still at the pinball thing. I just read. Is he? Yeah, as I said, I can jump in. No video. Uh, I just text him. Yeah, he's probably out. Oh, he says he's, he's not feeling well. Oh, uh, that sucks. Poor Scott, yeah. And Ricardo said he'll be here in a few. You know what, man? Why do we even start at nine? You know? So me and you can sit here and like prattle on. That's what you always do, right? You but don't nothing. Know the, you don't know the format yet? No. It's been a decade. <laughs> you know. Um I was gonna what was the other thing I was gonna say? Um my wife and I went uh, thrift store shopping last weekend. That was fun. Hadn't done that in a while. I like, you know, there's like four or five in town that are worth a damn. Went to a few of those. Those are cool. I got, uh, I don't know if I told you about this, but like I, um, but yeah, I did. I mentioned this last year when I made my resurrection jar, which means you like, you go to the, go to a pond or something like that and you grab a hunk of, dirt and mud and water and throw it in a jar and you put it in your windowsill and then like like after everything settles up you like you see all this stuff growing all these animals and stuff inside water marine animals yeah. and my daughter wanted one so we went looking for i went looking for i didn't want to buy like a brand new jar for it or anything like that you know so but we went looking i found some found some little jars you know see. so once it gets nice outside we can go to the pond in the backyard and uh we can do that. Scott, you're not feeling well. Hello. No. I'm sick. As per usual, go to a convention. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. Sick and tired. What do you what is it like uh it, it, not a flu or something? I don't I don't know what it is. I mean, I just don't feel well and I'm dizzy and all that fun stuff. So Garbage. I'm laying down. Lay down. I'm in my bed right now. I'm in bed. <laughs> Uh, it's good. I'm in my spare Scott. bedroom because I don't know. I don't. I don't want to get Michelle sick. 
Did you did you pick the did you pick the spot uh, um, further away from the door or like close to the door? So when the monster comes in the room, like who's the monster going to eat first, you, you, Michelle or you? Oh, I'm in the far corner of the house, so probably Michelle. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember when one of my favorite. Uh, whenever I uh, for the for the longest time, all my life, I always jammed my bed to the corner of my room, and uh, you know, even as an adult, because oh. I, I I liked being able to. Well, one, it needed more space in the room, but I but I also like when it got when I got too warm. Like if you if you like go and you curl up against the wall, the wall's oh always dear. cold, you know. And so I would always it would cool me off. I I, I just that was one of the things I like to be able to do. And uh, mm. after um, after I got married, you know that just didn't fly. My wife didn't let me do that anymore. So, um, but yeah, she picked the spot closer to the right. door. So when the well, monster comes, no the monster really, will eat. Never her. really had that thing in my life, but. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, here you go. It's important in the spot. Well, here well, I'm gonna. I got well, my grievance, and I want. And I know how much you love hearing. Can I? Me. Can I talk about the pinball festival first? Or oh yes, pinball grievance? festival. Yes, I yeah, want to hear about care, pinball. I mean, I had so much pinball. It's like I got pinball coming out of my ears. <laughs> I overdid it too. I mean, you know, I so crazy because we had the um, we had the special passes so we could stay in the after party. <laughs> so Saturday, all right. Did so you say fun. we was it like you and Lincoln or what? Yeah, me, Lincoln, and Nikki. We all okay. went. So we um uh started, you know, in the middle of the week. We they came early and we played, you know, a lot of pinball and met up with some people and played a lot of pinball, played a lot of pinball, and you know, start so I'm starting off pit pinball overload. Not overload, but I had a good time. Um so we go down there Friday and it starts at around I think it opens at four. But since we had the special passes, we could get in early. So we get in early and we start playing stuff. And there's like a tornado comes like not Not really that there was a tornado siren going off and stuff. So it was kind of crazy. But uh, we had missed the big part of the storm. So I think that was a little lucky. But um, I think the I think there was some issue loading in like they were still loading in when we when we got there. So but there was like 500 machines there. And um, so we started playing some of the games like the it gets crowded very quickly. And uh, so we started getting in line right away and we played the Looney Tunes game, which was awesome. And we played the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. Uh, we played the Elton John new g- game and we played Jaws and we played oh, was some other stuff. All basically everything new labyrinth uh, was new. That was great. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so it was lots of fun pinball stuff. You know, it's like 10 hours straight of standing, which is, I'm not cut out for that. Yeah. Go home, go back to bed, get up the next day, and I'm immediately not feeling well. And I don't know if I was sick already then, but I don't think I was, but I was definitely not feeling well. And so we put another day in on Saturday all day. And then we get the, we had the after party, which was like till 2 a.m. And I just, we stayed the whole time over and over. So brought it on myself, I think, a little bit of overdoing it. And, uh, Lots You're not of a young man anymore, around. Scott. What's that? You're not a young man anymore. <laughs> I'm not a young man, for sure. Uh, so I was trying to sit as much as I could because my feet were just killing me. I, they had a carpet, which was nice. So it wasn't like, you know, standing on a convention floor, but it was it was close. Um, but played a lot of pinball, met a lot of people. I met Brian Eddy. <clears throat> Brian Eddy is the designer of uh, Medieval Madness and Attack from Mars and uh, Venom, Stranger mm-hmm. Things. Mandalorian, really, really nice guy. Um, I had a good conversation with him. Um, talked with uh, the programmer, one, a bunch of the programmers at Stern, which are re- they're all really great. They were, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> you got to clear my throat. Um, oh. the, uh, there was a new coder on Stern, um, a woman, Elizabeth, I think it was their first female coder. Uh, <laughs> and she was very, very charming, very nice to talk to. Met the coder from Godzilla, met the coder again from, or not again, but I had met the coder who, who knew one of my old college friends. And so we caught up about that, about that. And that was cool. And he had coded Deadpool and Foo Fighters. So lots of coders came to, came to the Texas pinball festival. 
um, and some designers. Um, got pictures with a bunch of designers. Got pictures with Steve Ritchie. I got a picture with his brother, Mark Ritchie, who also is a pinball guy. Uh, Scott said, boy, you know. <laughs> he's a designer of Pulp Fiction. And um, Steve Ritchie did Elton John. And Steve, Steve Ritchie did all the Black Knights, and he his voice is in the Mortal Kombat game. You know, I like finish him, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really cool. There's lots of lots of people there, and lots of people to talk to. And I shook everybody's hand, of course, and that's probably what got me sick, unfortunately. Oh, wow. uh, Lincoln and Nikki are unscathed. They uh, they were they were good. They they had masks the whole time, so they were protecting themselves. But um, I did not do the mask thing this time. I just wanted to be free. And now I'm paying the price. The con crud is on me, but um, it was good. So, Scott, how many machines come out a year? Uh, I would say a dozen. A dozen? Okay. Yeah, not a dozen. There was like seven new machines there. Um, Jaws, Labyrinth, Elton John, a barbecue game, barbecue-themed game, which made no sense to me. Um. Pulp Fiction was there, although Pulp Fiction came out last year. None of the new, none of the, nobody got their machine yet. It hasn't actually been delivered. So Pulp, Pulp, Pulp Fiction was there again, kind of new, uh, in quotes. Um, what else was new? Uh, Looney Tunes was new. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was new. Which with that company, what they do is they take the same layout and they just change the graphics and the and the game. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre was cool, but I just couldn't get into it. Looney Tunes, I loved it. Even though it's the exact same pinball machine. Which is kind of crazy, right? Okay. Just a different feeling, 100% on the uh, the play of it. But um, anyway, there you go. Texas Pinball Festival. Texas Pinball Festival. Hey, Luca. Your, your audio is not going there, buddy. You're muted. Turn it off. Turn it on again. <laughs> so other than the Concord, you had a good time, Scott? Yeah. Um, like I said, I got to, you know, I got to figure out my health stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's annoying. It, it was a challenge to get to that. The third day, I didn't, I didn't even go in on Sunday because I was just not feeling well enough. Yeah. Um, Lincoln and Nikki went in and they played a bit and then we went off and had lunch and then we came back to my house and it just hung, just crashed. And then um, Monday we did a little bit of pinballing at the office, but then I was just starting to feel sick. <laughs> and unfortunately it just is now taking hold. Not COVID so far. I looked, tested twice. So I think I start pumping it doesn't feel as bad as COVID. I mean, it feels bad, but it's not, <laughs> not COVID bad. It sucks. Yeah, it does. Uh, hopefully, it'll get better. Yeah, Luca, we're in bed with Scott Alden. Hey, Hi, Luca. buddy. How's Hi, it going? Can you hey, hear Luca. Yeah, you're you're on now. Mm-hmm. All right. It's, I don't I don't do this often, like mm-hmm. at all, actually. <laughs> First time. All right. So, Scott, I, I mentioned this to Barry before Luca got here. Do you remember Bored to Death, the the old the old uh, the old YouTube channel? I vaguely remember it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they they were they were one of the yeah. They were one of the first. Yeah, yeah. From a th- from a thousand yeah, it was a long ago. time ago. By accident, I did that actually. <laughs> what you 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 slipped? You hit the button on the camera and we hit well, record. Because <laughs> what I was what my my actual job was uh, wedding videos. I was doing wedding videos, and I I had mm-hmm. bought this new camera, and I wanted to test out the camera. So I I filmed the session of descent, and then I wanted to test out how to edit with that camera <laughs> and it came out that you know i i did a, an edit of us playing it and put a voiceover on it i threw it on youtube and it, it just we got a lot of views and i was like okay well i guess i could do this on the side while i'm doing my wedding videos and that's how that's how that was born <laughs> from testing a camera hmm. yeah and then you then you made a channel then i made a channel I made a website first, which was really bad. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I had no web design whatsoever. I was just trying to like embed videos on my website, and it was just a mess. But yeah, it picked up. It was good. I I did a few uh, 
I started doing a lot of like Kickstarter previews and stuff, and uh, I still do it a bit, not as much, but some companies contact me, so when they do, you know, I try to help out. I try to do videos or at least a post of something, whatever I can do to help, you know, like little Kickstarters try to get to their goal. So it's, yeah. it's not that it's not that yet. <laughs> I miss Gen Con though. I miss I really miss Gen Con. It's it was fun. It, it was just a very long drive and we had to rent a truck and everything and it was just it was just a lot. Me and my brother going back and forth and like it was a twelve hour drive, I think. No. Yeah, you almost spent twelve hours with your brother. Yeah. <laughs> Not in a truck, no. <laughs> I used to love it. I, I used to tell him I'll drive so that he could sleep. <laughs> <laughs> did yeah. you did you ever um I mean because you're in Canada, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm in uh, Quebec. You're right there. Uh Barry Barry's like, I think they're in Quebec. And I was like, Yeah, because I thought yeah. I remember talking about a rule book law up there that they had to be in French with with you in particular, Luke, the last time you were on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it, I, it's still a problem. It's like the language problem is never gonna go away. I think in Quebec, it's just one of those things where you you want to sell something here, it has to have a French version of it, or else you know you could get a fine or whatever. It's crazy, really crazy. <clears throat> That's why all my games, I try to do them multilingual, so at least I can, you know, sell them to local stores and stuff like, you know. So I have to try to always get a French rule book in there or use a lot of icons in my games so that it's easy to make different rule books for it. And so yeah, most of my games have been multilingual just because of that, because I wanted to sell it in my own province. Yeah. Fair Stuff enough. Makes the game a bit more expensive, but uh, the only way I could have it here and be able to sell it in my shop. Should we ask these guys the rule book question, Lance? <laughs> Oh yeah, I was gonna say, what's the? Uh, I asked a little bit ago. I said, what's the? Um, uh, what's the, what's the worst rule book that you ever? Uh, that you ever encountered? That wasn't a war game. <laughs> and Anthony, if any of you remember what this was, what was that? What was the old? What was the old uh, uh, board game? That like when everybody was like, oh, I want, I want an, a, like a fantasy adventure board game. Everybody was like, well, there's Talisman, and then there's this one. It was like Heroes or something. I forget what it was. Return called. of the Heroes. Return of the Heroes. That's yeah, what it that was. was a good game. And then, and then everybody basically said that that had that needed a English to English. Uh, I was taught the game, so I don't know. Yeah, that <laughs> was horrible. It was taught to me. No, they said it needed an English to English, an English to English translation. English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the and then the, the, the sequel Under the Shadow of the Dragon that can be combined or whatever. Did you ever uh, play it? No, I mean it was I, pretty I, great. I it was remember great. I, I owned a copy and then I remember I took it out one day and I, I read the rules and it was horrible. Mm. And and I was just like I I couldn't get it and I couldn't grok it and I was just like oh, I'm just gonna put this away. And for a while there, it was just impossible to get a hold of, and people were selling their copies for hundreds of dollars. And I think it was on Tanga. Might have been, yeah. Yeah. Return of the Tanga. Heroes. Yeah. Uh, designed by Lutz Stepanot. I would play it again, honestly. I just remember really liking it. Mm. I guess I would not be able to know how to play it. No. It's been at least 20 years. All right. Well, Luke is here to talk well about whatever, that kind of thing. But also he's here to talk about a game that he has on Kickstarter. We're going to discuss this in just a little bit. But I want to talk about my – there's an area of your grievances. And, and – <laughs> And I want to get my area of grievances out. I want my area of grievances out. And this is actually pretty, a pretty mild area of grievance. This is a pretty mild area of grievance. But so um, my wife uh, checks out, like she's always reading about new restaurants in the area, new things or whatever. And she always finds mm -hmm. these cool, interesting ones. And she's like, hey, let's go try this place out. 
And so we, she was like, oh, there's this new, like, you know, the, there's, there's restaurants that are like the, the pancake restaurants, you know, we serve breakfast all day, you know, and then we're open 24 hours or whatever, you know, your Denny's, you know, your international house of pancakes, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And so she read about this new place. It was called uh, Benedict's. And uh, Benedict's was, um, it's like, it's like, you know, come get Eggs Benedict. And my wife really likes Eggs Benedict. And so she's like, look at this menu. And I was like, okay, well, and I was looking at the menu and there's, like, they don't just have Eggs Benedict. They have all kinds of stuff. And I was like, I probably could find something. I think there. that's a chain, right? I've heard that name. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know there's three, you know, because I had to go to their website to fill, to fill out my complaint form. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> only one <laughs> so i um so we went there on saturday and we got there at like noon or one there's people standing outside and i was like well it looks and she's like yeah it's all they say it's always busy and i was like okay well I mean, that must mean something right and i was like and so we got in there and i was like so i was like what's the wait and they said two hours and i was just like well, that, that's no restaurant is worth waiting two hours. No. So that's I said two hours, and my wife was like, "No, nah, that's okay." So we said, "Okay," and I said, "Let's just come back tomorrow." And they were like, "You know," they said, "Either get here early tomorrow or come on a weekday morning." We're usually not very busy then. Two and hours. and then they said, and they said, "Well, we're and 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 I was like, oh, so like, could I just come back in two hours?" And they're like, "We're probably I gotta be honest, we're probably gonna close early today because we've just had so many people." And I was like, all right. And I noticed that they actually close at like four o'clock in the afternoon. They're literally like a breakfast lunch place. They don't have a dinner. So that's fine. So yeah, when I, we, got up on, when we got up on Sunday. I got up and I said, hey, let's let's go to the place. And she was like, cool. And did you, she said, you can actually sign up on their wait list online. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll do that. So I went to go do that. And they said, when I went to it, the website that says we've shut down signing up online. And I was just, I told that, and my wife was like, like five minutes ago, they said I could sign up. And I was like, well, let's just go. So we drove there. Because we pulled in, like, uh, somebody pulled out of the parking lot right in front of the restaurant, like, literally, like, left. So I was like, well, that's pretty sweet. So we pulled in right in front. And um, it was kind of a cold and, and blustery day, if you will. And uh, we, so I walked in. And they said 45 minutes to an hour. It was like 8.45 in the morning or 9 in the morning or something like that. And I was like, that's fine. You know, cars park right outside. They'll text us when they're ready to go. So we went outside and I was just like listening to the radio or something. My wife was reading a book that she's reading right now. And like in like 20, in like less, like it was like 20, 25 minutes later, they texted us said, hey, your table's ready. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, just like it wasn't an hour or whatever. So up to now, I'm pretty pleased with the whole situation. I mean, it's like, okay, you know, it's like, I mean, I mean, I would have maybe liked to have lounged around the house a little bit, but I'm excited to go check out this new place and eat the inside. Very clean, very nice looking. Um, you know, it wasn't anything fancy by any means. It, it, it kind of looked like a fancier Denny's, you know, kind of thing. Um, and then we, uh, uh, and you know the service staff, excellent. You know, they came over. Um, they had a uh, like a steak and potato to burrito that I thought looked kind of interesting, so I ordered that. Um, uh, and I got like you know breakfast potatoes to go with them, and, and Rebecca got her eggs Benedict or whatever. And so, <coughs> so then we ordered the food, and that was cool. And I was sitting there, and like I had, and she got a iced coffee i got a you know soda and i was sitting there and and um it took a long time to get our food which again they were busy but you don't ever notice that when you go to a restaurant that's like busy but you see that again you see there's like tons of people standing waiting to be called so they can get their they, they can get their like and you look around there's empty tables everywhere mm -hmm. and i get it like they don't want to have a bunch of people sit down a bunch of orders come in they don't have enough waiters, wait staff to like, you know, handle all those people. 
But I always thought, like, if I'm, like, sitting there and I'm like, oh, it'll be a half hour wait, sir. And you look and there's, like, you know, 12 open tables. You're just like, well, can I just go sit down? I mean, it's like, I mean, you know, but, you know, I, I and that, that's neither here nor there. It's just, it, I get the reason why, but, you know, I don't know, hire more people, but nobody wants to work or whatever, whatever axiom you want to use. Anyway, so we waited a fair amount of time, which was fine. I mean, I'm just sitting there talking, talking to my wife and we're kind of laughing about stuff. And we're just, you know, looking around the place and talking about whatever. And, um, and then after, I think it was about a, about a half hour, maybe a little over a half hour to get our food, which is weird. Right. You know I mean, like you just, it's, it's eggs. It's a, it's, it's a burrito. Shouldn't take that long, but whatever, busy, whatever. We get our food and <laughs> Uh, they they put you know they they put the food down in front of me and the, the food looks nice or whatever, and you know wife starts to dig in. I pick up. They have the burrito. It's cut in half. You know I picked it up. And I bit into it. The thing's freaking cold. Like, like I can tell it's cooked, right? Because like the steak chunks are you can see they're like they're cooked to medium well doneness. Just a little tiny bit of pink in the middle, whatever. But like everything in the thing, it's just it's 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 cold. And and then my wife saw my reaction and she's like, "What's wrong?" And I was like, "My food's cold." And she's like, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah." And like so, I hand and she's like, and she she took the piece and she took a bite out of it and she's like, and she goes, "That's really weird." And I was like, "Uh huh, it is really weird." And then I thought, and I was like, "I wish I had the menu." Because like I mean maybe I missed something where it said you know it's it's served cold like it's like made like like a cold burrito or something I don't know you know kind of one of those things and so I mean it still tasted okay it was average but it was like I bet this would be really good if it was like warm you know like you know but if it wasn't <laughs> and then I and then I was like you know and like and so but my wife said her food was good or whatever and I you know and so I just. And I was hungry. And I was also like, well, if it all took over half hour to get my food as it is, you know, I mean, what am I going to do? Send this back so they can, what, like reheat it or, you know, whatever, you know, like how long am I going to wait? In the meantime, then my wife's going to be eating her food because I'm not going to tell her. And I'll say this. It's like, if I get some, what? What did you say? Uh -uh. Oh, no. So I'll say this, like. I knew that there was something wrong with the food. I knew that like it wasn't just me being crazy because my wife actually said to me, if you want to complain, go ahead. I don't mind. Usually, if I have a complaint about my food, she's like, just don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And I'm like, well, this really pisses me off. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's just not worth getting upset about. You know? yes. And you and ninety nine percent of the time she's right, but she was just like, if I, I mean, if you wanted to, I have no problem with it. I was like, nah, mm -hmm. it's fine. Because like literally like there's a there's a ton of other stuff we wanted to do that day, and I was just like, so, I mean, I should have I should have like, if I wanted to say something, I should have said something to the wait staff. But again, they didn't cook the food, whatever. I mean, and in my head, I know what happened, right? Something happened where my food got done, they forgot to make my wife's food, or they made my wife's food because it's something that's very common for them to make. Somebody grabbed that, thinking that was their food, delivered it. They realized that my food, so they said, quick, I need another one of these. It got forgotten. Whatever. My food just sat somewhere and didn't, nothing happened with it. And then when they delivered it to me, they just, they, they had hope, you know, or whatever, which is fine. It happens. No big deal. But, you know, I mean, like the burrito or whatever is like, you know, 16, 17 bucks or whatever, which again, not, not a huge amount of money, but I mean, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to write them a very nice email so i went to their website i used the contact us portion and and there's a big thing when you go to the contact us and it says you know like uh we will respond to all contact within 24 hours of getting this so i filled it out and i was very kind and i was very nice i even gave all the information about my order and i said this is how my order this is this is what order number i had this was my cashier this was the time this is the no response still. Sent that on Sunday. No response. Zero. They were very busy. <laughs> they were very, very busy. Four to six weeks, Lance. Didn't you see that? Hold on. 
I'm looking for the email. <laughs> but what do you expect? <laughs> I mean, what do you want? Here it is. Dear sir. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of Benedict's hometown heroes, I completely apologize for your experience. Hometown <laughs> heroes. <laughs> there's two Benedicts here in Dallas. Benedict's yeah, I think there's one around the corner for me. <laughs> Yeah. Part of Northern Hospitality and Company. Right. So here's the thing, like that. I understand, like if it takes a half an hour, and you basically say your food's cold, they're gonna remake it. Yeah. Then you're gonna be waiting like another ten minutes, and then your wife will be eating, and she'll be done. Yeah. And you, your food, and then you have to eat by yourself, which I hate that. I've done that many times. Yeah. It's almost. It's just not worth it. And, and, and as far as and I'll I'll be I'll be completely honest for those of you who are who are getting excited for one of my classic one of my one of my classic then these mother humpers you, know, just you like, should have just complained there just to have a better story I should have I should you have should have I should have and what would have uh, happened make the I've poor been, teenagers cry I mean, it gives you content <laughs> for the week I'll you, say you this. You could have gotten it for free, no? If you complain, like here if we complain, usually we get something, we get it free if something's bad. Well, and that's just yeah. I mean, I wasn't looking to get like free food or anything like that. I was just like, I, I really would have liked just, you know, I mean, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna come to your store and I'm gonna I'm gonna come and do this, go through the process. I just I don't know. It was it was annoying. And I was and I was annoyed. And uh and 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 it's still like, and then, and then what? What I always want then, and I, and admittedly, it's stupid, but I would just, I just want somebody, and again, it's stupid, to just I massage my hurt feelings a little bit, right? Yeah, you know, just say, hey, it that has sucks. To be heard. Yeah, I mean, I want to, I want to have somebody say, you know what, that sucks. I'm sorry. Maybe you will when they respond to you this week. They're not going to respond. <laughs> somebody never, saw it. Never were tell just, you, but they my... were just like, screw this. Uh, did I ever tell you my Smith, Smith and Molensky story? No, Smith but I want to hear it desperately because right. it sounds right. amazing. Up, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I won't keep it. I'll, I'll keep it short. But basically, it was restaurant week here in Dallas, which is crazy busy, right? So everything's crazy. Yeah, which is fine. I get it. But so me and Michelle, we went to Smith and Molensky. So it's a steakhouse out in New York, and there's one in Dallas that opened up at the time, and this was ten years ago, at least, maybe more. Um, we both ordered steak. Uh, I think we or ordered fillet. She, we both get, she orders her like medium well. I, or, I always order mine medium rare. And um, they come to the table and she cuts into hers and it is like raw. Like, I mean, I couldn't, I've never seen such a raw steak. Mine was medium. So I thought, oh, maybe it got mixed up. Right. Right. Medium rare was supposed to be, that was supposed to be me and they undercooked it or something, whatever. So I swap with her. I give her mine and I start eating and I'm like, I cannot eat it. It's just so rare. I was like, I got to send it back. <laughs> send it back. <laughs> a good 15 minutes later, it comes back to me and it is a, I'm not lying, a piece of charcoal on the, on the plate. And I was, <laughs> I mean, it was just burned. I couldn't, it was unreal. I cut it open. It was like, this thing is just a piece of, it was charcoal. I've never seen it. They cook that poorly. I was like, oh my God. Okay. Uh -huh. so send that back. <laughs> I'm like, Michelle is long done. And I'm like, I can't, you know, because it took a long time to get it recooked. And then I get back and it's like wrong. Send it back. And um, he's like, oh gosh, I forget what he what happened. I I think it I don't since it had taken so long, I was just like, you know what? I think we're just gonna skip the food. And he basically offered a, to bring us a piece of cake and the cake was have you ever been to smith Molenski's? it's the cake is like tr two feet tall like it's it's a gigantic piece of cake so we get a piece of cake and i'm eating some cake because that was all i had which is fine and then he comes back and he apologized he goes oh it's 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 my it's i'm sorry that we put our we didn't put our best foot forward today but uh here's some steak knives <laughs> and he <laughs> and popped the meal so there you go there's a story it was just, I mean, it was like we were there for two hours. I had no food except a piece of chocolate cake and steak knives. Yeah. All right, can I throw my restaurant story on. since we're doing restaurant stories? Yeah, sure. Well, well I, yeah. I just I want to tell one. Just I used to have a buddy that worked at a, a, a restaurant <laughs> that was by a by a by a movie theater, and he said they would always get these people that would come in and they'd be like, 
oh, it's like I got a movie I got to make in like 40 minutes. You know, can I can I get, make sure I get my food, you know, in time so I get it and I can eat it and I can get to my movie. And and they'd always say, OK, well, yeah, I mean, we'll do our best kind of thing. And then he would like, yeah, I want to I want a steak and I want you know, it's just like you want a steak. And so like, OK. And then like he like it's literally just said, Mikey cook it. <laughs> just they literally would just press it and press it and like flip it and press it and press it just like basically squeeze all the flavor out of it as they fast as they possibly could to like kind of just so they could cook it as fast as they could and then they get it and they'd be like well this is garbage i'm not paying for this it's like well you wanted a steak in like six minutes <laughs> like what did you want <laughs> you know, just like, he's in the he just, <laughs> guy's just beating the hell out of the the, the the meat trying to get it done anyway go ahead all right so uh jen and i are gonna go out to karaoke one night and this place is supposed to have there's a they have a bar that serves like bar food, but they also have a restaurant next door that serves Italian food. <clears throat> so we go early to go eat at the restaurant, and then we're gonna go over to the bar, walk next door to the bar after. We get there. There's literally four people sitting at a booth in one corner, and two people sitting at a booth in another corner. We walk in. We're standing there for five minutes before someone acknowledges us, which should have been our signal. But the girl says, sit anywhere you like. So I go sit like two boots away from the four people that are on that side over there. She comes, she sees us. She goes, she brings us some water and she's like, I'll, 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 I'll be right back. Disappear. Now, the way the restaurant is, there's like a they have their own like little bar there and so, like to serve the people in the restaurant. And I hear them talking over there, but nobody comes back. Ten minutes goes by, fifteen minutes goes by, twenty minutes go by, still nobody. So, so someone comes over and brings something to the table of four that's sitting two things away from us. Again, she doesn't come over to us. A half an hour has now passed. And now I'm, I, this is a freaking this is hysterical. So I take out my phone and I call the restaurant. Someone picks up. It's in the kitchen. And I say, hi, we're sitting in the restaurant. Can someone come over and take our order? Nice. Nice. <laughs> Ten more minutes goes by. You, and still you couldn't no flag anybody down? Okay. <laughs> I literally, I literally got up, and I hear them talking over the thing. And I turn around and I said, "Hello," and the girl walks into the kitchen. So I followed her in. Uh -huh. <laughs> I walk into the kitchen, and it's like there's a ton of people working there, and you could tell the people who work in the restaurant versus the people who work in the bar. The people in the restaurant are wearing white shirts with little bow ties and whatever. And they're all just standing there in the kitchen. And this little tiny old man comes running up, wants to know well, who the hell I am and why I'm in his kitchen. I'm like, you own this place? I said, I've been sitting in your restaurant for 40 minutes. I said, never mind, no one's come over and taken our order. They didn't even bring us a menu. I said, they sat us down. Oh, I'm sorry, but, you know, we're very short staffed. I said, there's, there's six people in there. Four of them are at one table eating, and two are at the other table eating. We're the only two other people in there. Oh, I'm sorry. What, 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 what can I do? I'm like, give me what you can do. Give me 40 minutes of my life back. I said, we're going to eat dinner and then spend money over in your bar next door. But you know what? I'm leaving. And I, and I was, like, screaming. like, mm. And I'm like, you know what? I, I understand when it's busy in, in places and all that. I get it. Like, people all the time. We go to some places around here, and it's really busy. And they apologize emphatically. And it's not even that long a wait or anything. And I'm like, no, it's fine. I understand. You're busy. It's fine. We're, we're, we're fine. We're, having, we're in no rush. We understand. But I was like, this, this, like, you totally ignored us completely. I said, I called your restaurant. And someone in the back answered the phone. And I said, we're sitting at one of your tables for 40 minutes and nobody has come over. <laughs> He couldn't believe the whole thing. And I'm like, and the and the, the girl, now I see the girl who sat us, who was supposed to be our waitress, 
is over there and she's like talking to someone who's like giving this look like all oh, these people are complaining these people i'm like you, and i turned around and i said you should not have a job <laughs> i said not even this job you should not have a job period <laughs> did they uh did they did They fire. I demand satisfaction. I don't know. It was, it was probably his like niece or something, and whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. That reminds me when I when I ordered that order from the pizza place, the 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 the, 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 the ubiquitous pizza place, and then when I went to go pick up my order, and like everybody was hiding from me, and I called the number, and I heard the phone ring, <laughs> and they answered it like fools. And I, I asked, think it was just you, Anthony. They didn't like the looks of you. <laughs> yeah. And then I said, "Where's I'm out here? Where's my pizza?" Oh, well, we canceled that order. Oh, really? Because I'm looking at it and it says it's ready on my phone. So <laughs> the the thing that bothered me the most about all the entire thing was what he said. Uh, we're you have to say we're, we're very short. We're busy. Things. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "There's six people in there." I said, if you want this, take my order. I'll come in the kitchen and pick it up out of the window. I was, I'll bust the table myself. It's just the fact that you just totally ignored me. It's just driving me nuts. Uh, see, after 20 minutes, I would have been out. <laughs> and they're like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I'll go <come> somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, then they don't learn. They'll never learn. It, it was you becoming, think they're going to learn anyway, comical. Lance? What do they care? You left. <laughs> it was becoming yeah. comical. And it was like the other people at the other table were like, just looking at me like, are you freaking kidding? She went to their table twice in the first 20 minutes we were sitting there. I'm telling you, they don't like you, Andy. <laughs> they got one look at you, said, I'm not waiting on that table. They said, you know <laughs> that Barry Reynolds guy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're in Connecticut. They won't know me. <laughs> I've been there once you're in infamous. my life. <laughs> yeah, possible. <laughs> I, I don't I don't really have a restaurant story, but my it, it happened in, in my family's restaurant. Uh, there was a hit where so someone got shot, oh. and I was I was like right next door, at my other shop, my uh my game store, mm. and we heard like the, we heard the three gunshots from next door, and I was like, oh my god, what the hell's that? And I ran outside and I saw the guy running with a gun in his hand, and I went to see my family who basically works at that restaurant where I used to work too. And they were like in shock. My cousin can't work there anymore. So that's my restaurant story. <laughs> I don't have anything else. That went dark quick. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what city is this? That, that would have been that would I would understand a 40 minute wait for that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's understandable. Yeah. Quebec. Yeah, yeah Quebec and in Montreal. Uh, and, and it's crazy. It was in broad daylight. We like that's it's terrace season. Like a so. hit man? Yeah, yeah, the whole street was uh, in broad daylight. Yeah, yeah, the whole street was like closed for uh, for a festival, so there's a lot of people walking around and everything. The guy just right. walked up, three shots, and just ran away. And it's crazy because he's the street is parallel to a police station, like one street away. This guy had oh, really? like, no, super cold blood; it didn't care about anything. Did you ever catch the guy? Uh, probably not. I don't think so. No, not that I know of. Wow. But like I've never heard like gunshots, and it's it's scary how loud it is, you know. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Most people don't realize how loud they are. Yeah, like you can tell it's <laughs> not a, it's not a backfire. It's not a it's not yeah. a muffler. It's like oh my god, those were gunshots. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually a weird conversation I had with my neighbor. We were out in his yard with a with a campfire with the kids. And I think it was a motorcycle that backfired, but it was a, a couple times. And the and the kid who's nine was said, "Was that a gunshot?" And I'm like, "No, it's not a gunshot. You're all right." But he kept going back to that. He's like, "Are you sure it's not a gunshot?" I'm like, but "Why are you so concerned about the gunshot? And uh, where did you hear about a gunshot to begin with?" I mean, you're nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> the world is yeah. I was like, no, guns have a distinctive sound, especially between handguns and rifles and shotguns. It's a distinctive sound. It's not a gun. You're okay. We're in the suburbs, kid. We're not in the middle of the city. <laughs> you know? Maybe he shoots a lot of guns. You don't know. It might have been a gunshot. You don't know. No, nah, it was 
I think it was a motorcycle, which is backfiring. Yeah. Oh, Fair actually, enough. I had a hair once in a smoothie, and I I asked them to like you know give me a new one. So you got two hairs. Went, yeah, like you know, like a, you know, I was just a long hair in a smoothie, and you can tell when they they didn't remake the smoothie. They went back, and like five seconds later, they come back and they just probably fished it out or whatever. <laughs> like it doesn't take five seconds to remake a smoothie, so that was kind of like yeah. ask Lance about smoothies. I mean, it's just a hair. I don't know. Like, would you guys drink something that had a hair in it? Like, I can't. I oh, have, no. I have like, I you know, I have three dogs and two cats. And like, our food, like, inevitably, it doesn't matter. It's gonna get. Food Lance eats hair all the all day long. Uh, I just, eat my like, hair half the time. Yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> it can't stop. I mean, you just don't notice it. I mean, all the stuff. I mean, I guess as soon as you do notice something, then like it bothers you. But I mean, for the most part, you. We ingest so much crap that we just have no idea that we have, and it's just the way it is. Hey, Matt, we're sharing uh, restaurant stories. Do you have horror stories? Do you have any restaurant horror stories? I worked in like fifteen restaurants, so yeah, I got one. <laughs> he meant service wise, not, yeah, for, not the well, other yeah, if, as a customer. <laughs> As a customer, uh, no, you can do the opposite yeah. side if you want. I'll tell you a non-restaurant restaurant story. Non-restaurant story. restaurant. Well, it's a thing. So, if you ever go to a wedding, don't eat the salad. <laughs> uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Why? <laughs> so I worked. I worked at a catering hall. A I agree. I agree. And so you have to realize if you have a wedding and you have like. 250, 300 people at a wedding. It's a big wedding, especially a big wedding. You have to make salad for that many people. They don't make bowls big enough to make salad for that many people, especially if it's a place that has multiple rooms with multiple weddings going on. They use garbage cans. Yes. Yeah. So salad is made in a garbage can. And it's a garbage can that's made, that's specifically used just to make salad. Yeah, it's always food. It's but food what they do is they mm-hmm. cut all the lettuce and everything up and they throw it in the garbage can and then they put the dressing on and then you have to mix it. And with your arms. It, yeah. With their arms. <laughs> and there's a little hairy Italian guy who's an Italian place who really <laughs> pulls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the bottom yeah. of that thing and that's how they mix the salad. And then someone comes with a tray of dishes and he grabs a handful and throws it on the dish. <laughs> And that's how they make salad for 600 people. How do you think tuna salad's oh, made in a deli? <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> no, they're not making a garbage can full of tuna salad in, in deli. I, I have, Anthony. I've made 50, 60 pounds of it at a time. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work in a deli. I've never made that much tuna salad. Oh, man. It was nuts, the shit we go through. We used to get the number 10 cans. I'd open 16 of them at a time. <laughs> what were you serving? All right, Matt, give us a story. Porpoises? I don't, I, I don't know. I, like, nothing, nothing's like jumping to mind, but I remember I went to the board game night at uh, a pub just just in uh, in Ottawa here, and, and uh, I met a friend of mine early, and we had dinner, and I had I had something, and he had a veggie burger. And like Luca, there's a big fucking hair in the burger. And we called the waitress over and, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. She's like, did you want me to remake it for you? He's like, you know what? No, I'm fine. It's good. She didn't take it off the bill. Oh, yeah. And it was like only a, it was only like a couple of bites or maybe a quarter of it out. And I'm like, so we called her up and like, can you take this off the bill? Because, you know, I mean, she took right. it off begrudgingly, I guess, but... No, I don't really have a lot of. I mean, we're pretty forgiving when we go out to dinner, and nothing has really happened that I can recall Im- like immediately that was bad. I remember working. I worked at the Hard Rock Cafe for a long time, and I hate uh, that place. <laughs> I hate that place too. And uh, it was a party of ten or something like that. And this woman ordered this chicken Caesar, and I, I I come by do my quality check a couple of couple of minutes into the meal and. She didn't say anything. I said, how's everything here? You know, all good? She's like, oh, yeah, it's fine. And then I'm clearing the plates, and there was nothing left on her plate. I'm like, I'm like, oh, how was that? She's like, it was horrible, actually. 
I'm like, yeah, I can tell. And I was like, I thought she was kidding. And she's like, no, really, it was bad. I'm like, but you ate the whole thing. And when I asked you if everything was okay, you didn't say anything. She's like, well, I'd like my money back. I'm like, I, I, I'm not sure. I'll ask, but I'm not sure what we can do it for you. Anyways, there was a lot of that. Yeah, there's always somebody trying to get over. Yeah. No, I, I don't really have any horror stories as far as being a patron. I've already shared all my horror stories and all my past grievances. Maybe I'll think of one. I don't know. I just, you know, I, I, I really haven't had one really bad in a while. Like I haven't. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's just uh, I've been doing. I've been. I've been. I'm probably jinxing myself now. I mean, like this was not really much of a grievance. It was just kind of like, well, I had to eat the food anyway, you know. And it's just kind of like, well, there no wasn't, you know. I'm just annoyed that they haven't gotten back to me. I, I demand satisfaction, even if it's just a, I apologize. Maybe next time you come in, you know. I mean, like that last thing when I went to the, go get my coffee. Uh, my wife wanted coffee from that place, and I ended up standing there for, like, literally a half an hour waiting for my coffee, and and the I got a meek, oh, heh, sorry. <laughs> you know, did you, did you ever get your uh, McDonald's gift certificate thing? No, I never got the goddamn. You know, yeah. you know the answer. No one, yeah. no one, <laughs> customer service is out the window, man. There ain't nothing. They're yeah, very busy here. Nobody very busy. Cares. Nobody gives Nobody a shit. cares. All right, Luca, I, I, I want you to be part of the conversation, but let's, 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 let's have a chat. Let's, let's talk about you. So, so do, you, do you want me to? Do you want me to be raw, raw, or do you want me to? Talk about your campaign and give you some advice. What do you what do you um, want? I, I, I'm just here to chill with everybody. I, I'm gonna well, I, I wanted I'd love to be here every Wednesday if that's possible. <laughs> no, I, you can be here any Wednesday you want, man. I'll put you I'll put Careful you on what the, you wish for. I'll put you I'm on the no normal. longer the token Canadian. <laughs> I'll awesome. put I'll put you on the normal distribution and you can show up whenever you want, man. Awesome. Matt cool. is Quebec but, really Canada. But, but you'll have to say oh, don't even start that <laughs> What you talking about? <laughs> I don't. Anthony, what did, you, what did you say? I didn't catch it. And he'll have to say everything in English and French. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, just to make sure. And then you have to sign. Get censored. So, so uh, uh, Lucas got a game, and you published you published games in the past too, man. I mean, this isn't like yeah. your this yeah. isn't your uh, this isn't your first. Uh, your you first... got a game store too. Yeah, actually, um, my game store almost got robbed today. Oh yeah, burned down. Anyway. Almost got robbed, dude. Well, yeah, the he's guy trying to get out of and, Quebec, man. <laughs> he's trying to steal magic cards and everything. So I just walked casually, walked to the front door, locked it. But did they try and steal three hundred thousand dollars worth of magic cards? <laughs> <laughs> no, like no. Actually, this guy was an idiot. He was trying to steal like dollar cards, like that are just on the counter there, to, <laughs> you know, like to, to just look and browse or whatever. So he's shoving that in his pocket. I took, I like, I took my baseball bat in my hand and I called the cops. Really? And, yeah, yeah. Nice. Montreal Cops game right and, there. I, I kind of felt bad for the guy. Like, didn't look like thief or anything like that. It was just like maybe spur of the moment. He's like, oh, there's some cards here laying around. I'll put them in my pocket. And then the cops came in. They're like, do you want to press charges? And then I was thinking about all the court and all the stuff that I had to go through. <laughs> And the guy looked like he was like terrified. It looked like it was his first time. He was even saying, "This is my first time. I, I won't do it again. I promise." So I kind of let him go. And but you know, it's kind of kind of sucks. I felt like I I wasted the cops' time as well. And I don't know. It was the first time, so I didn't really know what to do. So I just like locked the door, made sure I had some kind of defense in case this guy tries to like do something, and just waited for the cops. And yeah. So it's a, it's a it's fun it's fun Montreal. There's a lot of things happening. <laughs> it's fun it's Montreal. Not a, it's not a shooting. If it's not a shooting, it's a it's a robbery. You know, like it's my sister lives in NDG. Oh, nice. That's a nice area. Really nice. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just so everybody knows, uh, he had uh, there's a game called Taw Wars. Uh, it, it is a um, I don't even know how to describe it. It, it, it basically because yeah. each person each person has their own dice tower and they they use those to roll all the polyhedral dice out 
and you use that onto a board, and then they will conflict with each other. Um, uh, I played it. It's fun. I've only played it once, though. I played it with my kids this past weekend. Um, it is live on Kickstarter right now. Um, you got five days left to make a little under eight grand. You think you're going to do it? Not all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I think they will. Wait, is it someone here? Yeah, it's someone yeah. here, Luca. But he, he, he. he oh yeah, showing... I think they will. <laughs> well, hey, it's the dad pad here, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Really like it on the uh, on the old iPad now. It's now I can start actually setting up games, stuff like that. You know what you could use though for us is a few more lights. Hard to see. Just a, <laughs> just a couple. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, so no, I mean, like, okay, you're not quite washed yet. Yeah. <laughs> for a second. No, I mean, so the, like a lot of people like to say things like, "There's no other game like this." You know, there really isn't any. I've never played a game like Tower Wars. I mean, it it really is something unique and special and in, in its own own uh, special thing. And it's got a great table presence. Uh, it's you know, it's it's all. I mean, a little lighter, you know, but um. But it is it is a lot of fun, and uh, go check it out, everyone. Uh, I think they check it out. Yeah, Boris, you should do a uh, you should do a a, a Kickstarter. Uh, uh, what should we dig? How do your... you spell it? I'm curious. T A H Wars, the Dice Tower game. Oh wait, I think I scrolled past this one when I was uh, browsing Kickstarter. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I see it. Ooh, free yeah, ship it. Thirty-six bucks. Wow. Yeah, it's super cheap. I also I got. Feel like... uh, I also got this guy. He's a uh, he's an artist that does uh, Futuramas, uh, Simpsons, and uh, Rick and Morty, and he uh, he did our like a loot goblin for us. Nice. Really cool. Yeah. So <laughs> Little promo card that's gonna come with the with the Kickstarter and uh, it's like because what what I wanted to do basically is be, why it's not expensive. Hold on, let me turn my camera. Uh, is because I like I don't know if it's right or wrong to believe this, but I think like Kickstarter is more of a like the backers are kind of like the founders of the game, so I I I don't think that companies should make profit on the backers they should make profit on uh the copies or the games that are left over after you've printed let's say a thousand because without the backers then you wouldn't have a game so what i did with white's so like cheap it's not that the game is not good it's because it's i, I just lowered the price to the point where it's just the manufacturing and the shipping and I don't make any profits off the backers. I only make Jeez. profits on the leftover. Wow. Is it, man? I got. I gotta say, honestly, it's so damn cheap. I I just don't believe it. Like I see this, and I'm like, oh really? I'm gonna save fifty three bucks, and it's a thirty six. Like it's almost too good to be true type of thing. But that's that's the, the problem. That's the problem. Just, I, like a I, lot of like they think it's too good, right? So uh, maybe the, maybe I was too low. I like I don't know. Like. Just, that just seems like my interesting thing, though. That's amazing. I just want the backers to to feel like they're you know they're they're the ones that are the, the pillars of the game. It's because of them that it's being made. It's they. I shouldn't be making money off them. They're just making my dream come true. So Did why you why charge them more? The video. It's gonna... Sorry. Do you have a personal touch in the Kickstarter video? It sounds like this needs to be a personal touch. This sounds like the kind of thing where somewhere in that video, you're like, hey, I'm Luca. And you're like, you're probably wondering how the heck we got the price down. The bottom line is my philosophy is that I don't want to make money off you. I want to make the money off the people who buy it after you because I believe that you are the people that make it real. So you might see that $36 price tag. Like, that is absolutely insanity. But no, you're right. I'm not making you're right. You're right. I should do that. I should like, but you 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 have that energy, that presence, like me in front of a oh, camera I, mean, I, start, I start to get a bit nervous and like i, I get that but i, I feel like that I'm would be shy. great but yeah I, you know what 
I'm gonna do that. Uh, it, it might not save the campaign now at this point, but I'll 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 do it. I'll take your advice for sure. That's a good idea. I want to. I've, I've got other stuff scheduled, but I can't even get over how fucking cheap this game is. I what like? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like thirty six dollars in free shipping, like bullshit. Like is that Canadian? Thirty six dollars. Yeah, it's, that's it's, so good. Thirty six Canadian. That's like that's like seventy eight cents American, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, Lance, that's exactly what it is. But it's because it, it cost me about 15, like 15, 16 bucks to make. And it's probably going to cost me another 15, 16 bucks to ship. So I figured, you know, that's it's, it's a good price range. Damn well, I, I, as as a publisher, I'm just going to say that that is that is while 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 noble and 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 I understand where you're coming from. You are asking for trouble, you know, like for when it comes time, when when the when you when the piper comes calling. I mean, I'm not saying it, you're going to fail or, you know, if, when you publish the game, it's not going to work. I'm just going to say there are so many things that you cannot plan for that, you know, like yeah. shipping price increases, uh, uh, you know, just the, the stuff that's going to take to to make the game itself. Just <clears throat> um you're already dealing with such razor thin margins as it is that this, yeah. I mean you're 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 just you're 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 just asking for it, I guess, for lack of a better term. And I know that sounds mean, I, but I, no, no, this I, feels I, like a this feels like the campaign that kills a kills a publisher, to be to be very blunt. Like the but, thirty but, like I it, like how do you but, ship it? How do you ship I'm, that? I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a publisher. That's the thing. I this is like a hobby for me. So, if I have to put in five thousand, I'll, I'll I'll put it. Like, yeah, for but me, it's like a third game. This game is my my baby. I just want it out there. I just want people to play it. Like, yeah, no, you you put out three games. You're a publisher. I mean, let's let's okay. not be a publisher. You <laughs> put out three games. I love, like, do- I'm publishers I just love doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just love doing it. Like I I I don't do it for the the profits or anything. I just I love doing it. I love putting out games there and uh, my my like my my real job is is my gaming store, my my video production company. Like I that, that's yeah. my real job. So when when I work on something for six years like this game, oh, are you are I, you just gonna push it out the door anyway? Let's be, let's. Let's talk honest here. You're just going to push this out the door anyway, because I see you went from an eighty-six thousand dollars funding goal to eighteen, which is that's that's really that's that's a huge wait, difference. Wait, wait, you're talking about the first time I did it? Yeah, you launched for eighty-four thousand the first time. It was the yeah. price difference. Yeah. So the first time, so what happened with the first time is what um, we I kind of partnered with Eagle Griffin Games. Oh, okay. And uh, there was, so there was a lot of things that were asked of me to do kind of uh i wanted to like because the game tumbling dice kind of inspired towers and uh wait wait, did it oh man that's an awesome game now i yeah i'm gonna cover this i'm gonna cover this now i'm gonna bump something else i don't give a shit about this is fascinating (laughs) i backed it (laughs) thank you thank you i love tumbling dice I love it too. It's so much fun. And and he came into my store and saw the game because I had it out on the table to show people like when they come in. And I didn't know he was Eagle. Like he, I didn't know he was the CEO of Eagle Games. We were just talking this and that. And then I mentioned, you know, Tumbling Dice inspired me to make this game. Like I wanted Tumbling Dice with a fantasy theme on it. And he's like, uh, well, I'm the I'm the the owner of Eagle Griffin Games. And and then we started talking and everything. We went to a restaurant. Then he came back. He said, I was at the restaurant. I couldn't stop thinking about your game. So let's work together on this, you know. Uh, the, the other problem with the first campaign was uh, my my store caught, not my store, but the apartment upstairs caught fire. And then hmm. the, the firemen came. They, they threw water everywhere. I lost half my magic singles underwater. So uh, I had to cancel because it happened at the same time that I, I was doing my Kickstarter. So it, it that that kind of went it was kind of hard and to relaunch with them, it was it was another another like huge ask of, of them. They were already kind of doing me a favor. <clears throat> but uh they before uh before the fire happened, they were supposed to launch a newsletter to all the 
uh, Eagle Griffin backers of all their games and everything. But and that never happened, so I I didn't get any of those backers. Uh, and then I got the fire, and then I, I told them, so we just canceled, and it it was a, a a huge mess, you know. So now I'm I'm launching it alone on my on my own, and uh, I I'm not partnered with anybody, so I just check what it's gonna cost me to make just this game. Uh, what's the the average shipping cost, and basically that's why I'm at a lower goal. I'm also printing less. Like they wanted me to print a thousand five hundred with like Panda manufacturing because oh. it has to be like be if expensive. their name is on it or if their name is associated to it it has to be like you know i guess really excellent quality uh but for this game it's it's a casual like game it's you don't need the insane amount of, of quality on it so i found a, a manufacturer that's a bit cheaper they could print 500 copies so that's you know that's why the the goal is lower and I have one question for you. It's just an idea. Like, I'm looking at your marquee, a unique, innovative, and exciting Dice Tower board game. And I don't I don't feel like it... Uh, granted, I don't know how the gameplay works, but it's just a Dice Tower board game. I don't... What does that mean? You know, it doesn't... It's, I don't it conveys the... What you're... Yeah. I, I, don't, I didn't know either how to convey that yeah. you're using Dice Towers as your pawn. You know, like, it's the first time you ever do that in a game. So... I well, didn't, I didn't... Players... Yeah, behind your head, it ain't me. Behind your head. No, behind my head. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I know you're you're super late on it, but I would consider you know just upgrading your marquee a little bit, maybe mentioning because here's the thing: two to six players, you've got yourself five and six players, which immediately puts you at a distinctive player count. And then when I see that it's a five and six player game that goes forty five minutes to one hundred and twenty minutes, and it has a dice tower, like you got a lot of really interesting stuff. And, and I'm because like, I don't know, I'm looking at your just your marquee, a unique, innovative and exciting dice tower board game. So the first two, they just feel like buzzwords, unique, generic. and innovative. Yeah. And, and they're very generic and exciting. You, they're all those all feel very generic, because one thing I always say when I do a Kickstarter critique is there's 200 games right now competing for money, like just yeah. not active live games. I feel like getting down to the fact it's two to six players, 45 to 120 minutes. And I feel like that would be more valuable to most people than the, the buzzwords there. Also, right. the free shipping, that's fantastic, but you got it front and center already. So I feel like you could totally, the multilingual is great, but I feel like you could totally wipe out most of that and put something else in there just to try to catch maybe some eyeballs. Um, yeah. Also, I don't, I don't like, I feel like focusing on the artwork on the left side as opposed to, the components i cuz the artwork's fine but it's you know like i i feel like isn't the components going to sell this more than the artwork for most people like some games obviously you know give or something it's like obviously artwork's the main draw whereas this one it seems like the dice tower and just the uniqueness of it seems like the main draw yeah is it am I, am I feeling that right yeah i yeah, know it makes sense yeah for sure 100% just, but yeah i mean i, I just can't believe they could just look so good. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Also, I, I, I thought mess. If you look at the comments, there's some people also in the comments are saying, "How, how is this not? How is yeah. this not funding? How is it, like they they don't understand?" And I know. I, to be honest, I don't understand either. Yeah. Like I'm I'm looking at other games on Kickstarter, and I feel like okay, well, this game looks like something I already have in my library, so I skip. And then like well, a lot of them well, are starting wait, to look. I want to pause you real quick there. You I said jaded, that. Wait, you just said that, and when I look at your main image, I think that. Yeah. I, I, oh, it's a bunch of big pieces of plastic on there. I'm going to, you know, it just, I feel like your game's got spirit, and the main image doesn't get it across as well. And maybe it's just zooming in. Maybe it's straight up fucking mentioning tumbling dice, if it's that much like tumbling dice, which I know so, that's a divisive thing. Some people are like, oh, you shouldn't mention games specifically. And some people are like, yeah, you should. I'm, I, I'm in that boat because... If I see the words tumbling dice and 45 minutes to 120 minutes, I'm clicking on that motherfucker. I'm saying, what? What the hell is this? And then I see all the, the game. Else. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's just. Yeah, it's true. You're, you're 100% right. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm even allowed to do that. Like, Yeah. You know? I mean, maybe it's, it's the first. A, what's a lawsuit? 
<laughs> yeah, what's a lawsuit? Jesus. Maybe, Other than hey, hey, I, I don't you want to check your ass, but I mean I see quotes all the time that mention it feels like this, that, the other thing. I oh mean, yeah, yeah. Or inspired by you could I guess you could say inspired by and stuff like that. Yeah, it's I'm, uh uh a forty five to hundred and twenty minute game inspired by tumbling dice. I'm checking like I'm I'm clicking, guaranteed. Okay. Got it's it. just something to think about. I just look at the main marquee, and it's like nothing there feels amazing, except for multilingual and free shipping, but you already crushed it by just, boom, yeah. free shipping to all these different locations. <clears throat> I'm just talking out loud. I want to stop looking at it, though, because I am going to try and check that out before you end, because uh, that looks cool. Awesome. <laughs> and I do I do want to give you another shot, because I know I played, I played your first game, and I was not for me at all. That's Which good game was that? It was that car one, way way back. Oh my god, like the snakes and ladder type game. Uh, yes, not Street Kings. I don't think it was before that. Yeah, Karma Race. Karma Race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. That, not a fan. that was yeah. That was like a like a family game that I did just you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm sure there's some people that totally hit the mark with it's just one for me. No, for I'm, sure. Hey, man, I'm going to see if I can get this covered because it looks super cool. And I mean, thank you. Yeah. I, uh, well, I, 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 have a, I have a prototype at Lance's place. Um, I don't know how close you guys are. <laughs> well, he I mean, lives in Indiana, but I mean, nah, but, but I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't, I couldn't like throw it to him, but you know. It's Maybe it's yeah, we'll figure, like we'll five, figure something out. Well, if you're like five days left, we can do something like that because I totally be down to cover it. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more Kickstarter content. Uh, awesome. But yeah, thank, you. thank you. Appreciate it. Who wants to take second place to Anthony in in, in initials? <laughs> oh, oh, can I give one more Kickstarter shout out for something real quick that I totally think is totally awesome? It's super quick. It's not a game, it's a product. <laughs> the new Mayday Games bag are really really freaking nice i just shot a 43 minute video last night doing a stress test between that and my boardgametables.com bag i put like 40 pounds worth of weights in there along with games just just beat that sucker up it's it's a great high quality bag definitely recommended it's expensive but you know it'll probably be a bag so here's a question and that was so expensive. here's a question would you buy one I am incredibly cheap. I would not. But if I okay, had... so that's it. That's it. That's all you need to know. Yes, Anthony. If I had disposable income and I needed to buy a bag, I would. It was nicer than the board game tables bag, which I love. I adore my board game tables bag, and I gave it away tonight at game night because this one just completely replaced it. It has a smidge bit less storage in the main compartment, but it's got drink holders. It's, it can be stra it can be strapped onto like a luggage cart, so you can roll it on wheels. It has thicker padding on the shoulders, which you really feel, especially if you put forty plus pounds in there. Because uh, I it ended up putting, I think it was sixty pounds roughly into each of them. And Does it, it have can, Bluetooth? No, no, not nothing. No electronics. Right. Chicks dig Bluetooth. It does ah, have, ah, it have zipper pockets. Right. There's so no I did not bag. know. I thought Mayday Games was was our, was our bag, but it's it's so expensive. It's 115 dollars, right? I don't see how. I don't understand the price. Like I could buy, oh, I could buy a brand expensive? new, I can buy a piece of luggage from Samsonite you for less. Buy, you could buy a Cajun bag for 50 bucks. That's just as much weight. I am glad I didn't look at the price. I mean, the price was just kind of, I, I didn't understand the price because I know it looks like very similar to the bags we make. And I know what those cost. Ooh, they are not. Juicy. I mean, we're not in the same ballpark because they're definitely more. Ni that bag well, is a nicer bag for sure. To quote a little uh, much nicer. We play the same fucking sport. We at least play the same sport. What's up? Are we playing the same sport? Is it? Is it? Uh, is it? Is it? Never mind. Never mind. No, we we have the same bag as board game tables. It's very similar. It's it's the same bag maker. Yeah, hundred and ten. Uh, yeah. Well, we don't charge one hundred and ten. I think we I think we charge like thirty. No, I'm looking at their price. One hundred and ten, and then you get two. Yeah. 
Not a, hmm? I'm just wondering what makes it so much more expensive. It, I, if better quality than the board game tables bag, and it was noticeable. Like it was noticeable. The more, so it's more padding, it's more pad. Is it the same material? Different material. It's, it's different material. It's more padding. The zippers were were better and more reinforced. And then there were some spots where it had double zippers on the Mayday Games bag. So you know, if one zipper broke off or anything, you could still make it work. Right. Um, it, it had more functional compartments. Like like you could open it. It's like oh, there's a zipper pouch and stuff. It had a spot huh. on top. There's three different ways to hold it as well. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I would. I just. I, would, I just. You could buy three board game tables bags for the price of one of those things. I think. Yeah. That, like I think sixty five I mean, like, tables. Is it it's sixty five? I thought it was sixty five. Well, I got to see what so we you could buy two of them. I mean. Hey, hey I'm just letting you know. I forgot what our bag costs. We're, we're, we're sold out. We're actually right now. I tested two bags and this bag was better and it was noticeably better. And uh, man, that was a fun video to make too. Boris, do you don't want to talk about the River Valley Kickstarter? Uh, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't got to it yet. Oh, we haven't? I, By the way, I, ours is twenty five dollars. We charge twenty five dollars for for our bag. That's pretty. Good. By four of five of our bag. Well, you uh, know what? I, mean, I, mean, I guess you'd be a one really, really good bag. Press test. What's I'll that? Weights in there. Put... We have put. I've filled mine with board games, and it works perfectly fine. Yeah. yeah what, what do you, why? Why? Why do you have to take them? Fifty nine dollars. You can buy a premium bag off of boardgametables.com right now. Fifty nine dollars. Or a twenty five dollar carrying... board game geek bag. Who needs a bag to carry that many games around with them? <laughs> I use it. I, I, I use want it. Every game. In in my dream world, where I run the where I run the board game conventions, I would ban those motherfuckers from the from the from from the yeah. the, the show hall all day long. Why I don't you make it so that you can push those people. That's it. You bring it. You're at your own risk. We give people permission to shove you, but only in the bag and lightly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, I just, I, I seriously, how many times you're sitting there? Oh, no, <laughs> you just. Oh, they're terrible. And then and the people are like, oh, sorry. And I'm like, you do realize you have a like four foot wide thing on your back that, that you're just you're spinning around doing jujitsu and you're knocking people over. I mean I've been there. It's I've done that. I've been that. And it feels not terrible. to be a dead horse, but load that link I just sent you and tell me if it's much different than that. I've uh, not really looked that closely. I'm on Facebook on I'm on I'm on my iPad. I don't know. Ah, forget it. Forget it. I'll check I'm it out later. Figure it out. Later. later. I mean, I'm not going to do that, but whatever. Uh, but Dan, so I'm thinking you get $115 per bag. Game. Game, right? I Seems would like go it's going to make its goal, right? Like it's already, it's already past its goal. Yeah. I were actually paying for it. To answer your question, Anthony. No, after knowing the price. But then again, I am cheap. I mean, I bought I bought a board game tables bag at Gen Con last year, but. I paid the more expensive price because I bought the red one. So I didn't want the board game tables branded one. And it was like a hundred bucks. Wow. Where are they getting these bags? I feel like it's the same bag as what we did. No. I'm no, sorry. It was a hundred dollars. I want to look very similar to the board game tables bag. You, you, you should just, you should really just know people, Matt, because I walked by and I had games in my hand and like uh, people that I know that work there are like, Oh, the Kevy, and I was like, "Yeah, here, have a bag." Joe said. yelled at me for buying it, actually. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So you're a fool. Um, I, uh, you're a fool, they're Harry Potter. Nine dollars. They're fifty nine dollars, which is like a hundred bucks for us. Okay. Oh, yeah, that would, makes you're... sense. Yeah. And I'm not blowing smoke up your ass with my cheap ass. I would buy this bag if all three were in front of me. Which bag? Oh, the one from May. I would buy. No, I'd buy Scott's. If all three of the bags were in front of me, I was at a convention. I saw all the prices. No brainer. I'm going with Scott's, but that's because I'm cheap. And because your price <laughs> is way better. It's not even close. It's four times less and two times less. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I would go with you personally. I'm Man, sure. that's a great I, I just, I'm curious if they're using the same bag peep makers. Uh, no. Your bag does not look as high quality. And that's not a knock on it. Like, because the board game tables bag, I even said in my video, it's high quality. It's just there's levels to this. And this yeah, bag. It looks like, it looks like another level of, of uh, materials. Yeah. I, I feel like years ago. I just, I, just a, wanted, I just wanted a cheap one. 
camera bags are really good. I I use camera bags. Yeah. They're not they're cheap, they're padded and yeah. They yeah. do the job. They're really good. Amazing. I Trump got a, are too. I got a bag a couple of years ago or a few years ago now for uh, Christmas uh for a cajon. It's like a a wooden box percussion yeah, it, instrument. It holds, it holds yeah. the drum, Cajun. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it's a soft H, a soft J. Anyway, it doesn't yeah. matter. That's what I have. I have a whole bunch of them. I paid 20 bucks a piece for them. Yeah, yeah this, yeah. this bag was bags. the worst bag. The zipper broke within like a oh. month. <laughs> it was like the <laughs> cheapest fucking bag ever. Well, it's yeah. only supposed to hold like a very light drum. <clears throat> not a, not board. What if it's an instrument? It, hold, it holds a wooden box. That's what a cage it is. Yeah. If, if it's an instrument, you should be like like schlepping it everywhere so you're taking it in and out and in and out and in and out. Right. And yeah. It should stand up. But you're putting like 100 pounds of board games in it, right? My two cents. <laughs> well, the, the difference with the two, Matt, is that the Cajun is one solid. It it weighs just as much. Yeah, as there's not there's not a lot of torque, right? It's not it's not being torqued around. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Fine. We should do a can space see. test of all the uh, bags. <sighs> you need more of that torque. <sighs> you, need the, you need the you need the you need the five dollar IKEA bag too. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty good. Those hold a lot of games. They do hold. A lot they of do. Games. Yeah. Clues. I, I got a, a twenty dollar duffel bag off of off of eBay that I use or uh, Amazon. That it's like the, the best board game bag I've ever bought. Twenty bucks. What? Like an army duffel bag mm-hmm. <laughs> with a strap. Oh, with a strap. It's the best. And they're like it. It's it's solid. It will not break. There's no way it's, it's holding up. Oh, yeah. If it breaks, you might die. So yeah, yeah I believe I mean, I've hurt myself on this bag. I put so much in it. All right. <laughs> Scott, I'm just went to your website. I'm disappointed. Why? With what? I need a replacement board game geek shirt. You don't have the one I ha- I want. Uh, which one? Do you uh, want? Uh, the 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 black one with the the orange. Uh, yeah, yeah. We gotta get more more shirts made. I want to buy another hoodie. Yeah, we yeah, gotta yeah. get hoodies made. Believe me, I'm on it. My hoodie oh, is gonna... one of my favorite. It, it, it's in like heavy obsessed rotation. with making the right apparel. Oh, yeah. Too much. I'm spending too much time on it. Yeah. You ever consider ties? What's, What's that? that? You ever consider ties? No. no. <laughs> I think. Next question. <laughs> no, 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 next no. question. Both <laughs> ties. Actually, I think we have sold ties. What? I think we have sold ties in the past. How'd they do? Big? I mean, I think we I think it was like Mr. Meeple or something that had ties. No, I mean board game geek ties. No. Ha! I think people <laughs> wear them. I th- I think nobody would wear them. Nobody would wear them. I think people would wear them. No, they Put would them not. Their front page just, just for a couple days. Put them, I'm sure <laughs> you have a great price. <laughs> I think a lot like hotcakes. Put a limited number. We got 3,000 of them. Three thousand, jeez. Like, that's like there for two thousand nine hundred ninety-five. Too many. Three thousand. I used to work with a guy, um, and and he 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 made me. He was one of the funniest guys I ever ever knew. And this is where I worked at U.S. Bank. But he loved thrift shopping. Like he loved going thrift store shopping, and and he just dreamed of the days when they would have the the bag sale, which was like literally like. You walked in, you took um, brown paper, like a brown paper bag, and it was like, and as long as it was, like, you could fill it up to the top, it couldn't be overflowing, you fill the top, it was 20 bucks a bag. And he would go thrift store shopping constantly, and he would, he would eBay everything. And he had this whole side business where he made all this money. And he, and the first thing he ever did on the bag sale is he would walk over to the area with the ties and he would just take all of them. He's like, because they were tiny and they were small. And I would just take every single tie they had and I'd throw it in a bag. And then I'd see what I had when I got home. And then so what he would what? What is this? It was just thrift store shopping on bag days. Like they oh, and bag like, days. Got bag it. days. And yeah. so then he just throw this in a bag. And like they were, he said, if if you ever found anybody, like he's like, you know what the crazy thing is? He's like, one of the things I always make anything. Um, old blue jeans. Um, if he ever found a uh, like a 
um a, a big giant uh lebowski sweater like those went really well he could sell those for tons of money and he said in every once in a while you'd have somebody that donated a bag of old school white tidy whitey jockeys that were still in the bag right so you knew nobody had worn or anything like that when i found those i knew i could sell those for a hundred dollars he said there was <laughs> there, he's like there's he said there's some weird fetish out there of people that want like old school tidy whitey underwear that like that like the the you know who knows what when they were made or whatever kind of thing but yeah he said the ties he would just like literally he'd go through them all and he'd sit there and he'd say Oh, well, this one's actually like silk, you know, so it's actually a nice tie. And like, and then he'd, he'd figure out when it was made and what company it was made and he'd sell those. But everything else, he'd say just a lot of, a lot of 20 ties, you know, 10 bucks and be able to buy it. And just because they, oh, okay, cool, I'll buy 20 ties, whatever, you know, and like, you know, because it didn't cost him anything. He just, but he'd, he'd come home with like 100 ties and he said, ties made me so much money. He said, I don't think anybody wears ties in, unless they're in a wedding or, um it's kind of like men's cologne right nobody wears that or else they're unless they're a board game hipster and want to show off your favorite website <laughs> <laughs> i guess there's 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 that there's, there's that. that so um, scott what is what's the second best seller at the store behind the bits ooh, that's fun to know Behind the bits um, ties. <laughs> is it apparel or uh no i think it's game trace Crazy. That makes okay. We sell. Yeah. I mean, we sell like hundreds of them because they're cheap. You know, they're like cheap little, nice little trays. Yeah, everybody needs them. Yeah. Speaking of which, did anybody see the uh, the bowls from Let's Go to Japan, like Deluxeified Edition? Yeah, uh, nice. They're amazing. <laughs> Compliment them on the Kickstarter. I remember. Did you get it? Did you get the wrapped one? Uh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice stuff to set away. And that was a cool uh, packaging. Genius. Think about how much money they're making on those fucking bowls. How many people? Yeah, those much... bowls are like 20 cents. Yeah. <laughs> how much <laughs> money are they making in bowls? Uh, they're probably even cheaper than that. Good for hmm. You don't really think it's good for them. You hate them. I do. I love AG. They're one of my favorite companies. Hands Is down. that game any good? Oh, yeah. It's great. I'm setting it up right now. I've played it twice. Oh, once, two players, once, three players. Highly recommended. Uh yeah, but well, let's play initials. <laughs> All right, who wants to, the race to take second to Anthony? Race, race for second. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll explain the game to uh to to our Anthony will do about eight out of sixteen, maybe maybe ten. <laughs> okay, look, this is a game that was designed uh by a uh, uh a guy in the radio in uh, Minnesota. Uh, he. <laughs> He's uh he's a guy on the morning show on the uh, K Fan uh the sports radio show uh based out of Minneapolis St Paul. I have a few friends that work for there and they're pretty cool guys and and this guy sends me these games so um he came up with this as a joke to because they had this guy that was going to be leaving uh their he was an intern and they really liked him and he was leaving so they to celebrate his last day they played a game he called initials. Because the guy went by the initials that he had. He went by his initials PA. That's what they always called him. They didn't call him by his name. And so they uh they said, okay, well, I I he said I have 12 things that have the same initials as this guy, and I'm gonna give six clues. You know, just say your name to ring in as your buzzer. If you think you know what it is, whoever gets the most right wins the game. Anyway, so that's what we do. Um, this is actually like he, he publishes one of the, one or two of these a year. This is the set oh. set three. Scott, did you get yours yet? Nope. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, Never so so I'm gonna I'll, I'll read gonna off I'll Never read off I read off the clues. If if you want to ring in, you say your name. So if you think you know the answer, what would you say, Luca? Luca. Yeah, perfect. You know how to play. <laughs> Um, if you, you get it wrong, wrong. <clears throat> wait, um, I need a second rule book. I need a second rule book. <laughs> <laughs> if you get it wrong, <laughs> you say that in French, please. <laughs> if you get it wrong, you're just out for that one. You can't ring in uh, for that okay. one. 
Anyway, yeah. so so now this is the game. I think we play. We we see how long it takes my camera to focus. HT. Thank you. God's work. Okay. So um, just don't don't say anything. Like a lot of people sometimes will like type out ideas of things you think them in. You're not allowed to Google or anything. No cheating. And here we go. Cooter one. This precedes dancing. Number two gained popularity in nineteen ninety. Number three, it's evolved to meaning getting down to business. Go number four was made popular. By Stanley Kirk Burrell. Number five. Anthony. Go for it. Hammer time. Stop. Uh, Hammer time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the number five was commonly follows the word stop. Yep. Final clue was popular catchphrase from the hit song "You Can't Touch This." Oh, that would have been fun. It would have been like six of us trying to ring it at the exact same <laughs> second. Yeah, <laughs> can't touch this. Do 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 do. But oh, wait, hold on a second. Where were the initials? H T <laughs> oh. Hammer H for Hammer T for Time. They're always the same. Okay. Yeah, they're always the same. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was wondering what. Time part was, but it was T. I'm glad you clarified. Clue number one. In a sense, connected to sticks, Grateful Dead, and Jamiroquai. Clue number two. Debuted in the 1970s. Clue number three. Connected to counterculture. Anthony, I'll go do. for it. High times. High times. I'm so disappointed in Barry and Forrest right now. So, Wait, uh, uh, so. <laughs> ain't me wrong in. <laughs> I thought I, I thought I heard the Cheech and Chong are gonna do one more movie. I think I saw it on the front page of like Bing, who lies a lot. I think you're correct. Oh <laughs> yeah. Did, did you did you read the reason why? Probably because they want money. They want they want money. Yeah. Oh, for closure. Did they say it was like closure or something? Yeah, yeah, but I remember um, famous oh, Norm Macdonald closure. <laughs> <laughs> famous Norm Macdonald joke where he said, uh, uh, "The monkeys are finally getting back together for a reunion tour after Peter Naismith has finally enjoyed, finally agreed to join the rest of his troops in a worldwide tour." You might also remember Peter Naismith as the last monkey to run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. And why did Peter Naismith have so much money? Michael Naismith. Michael Naismith, sorry. Why his, did Michael mother, Naismith... his mother invented liquid paper. That's right. His yeah. mother invented liquid paper and sold it to 3M for a gajillion dollars. And you relation to James Naismith? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. You read the basketball? Oh, uh, get, get, the, get, the, get the ball out of the pickle barrel or get out of the pickle mm -hmm. barrel. Did you realize that they used to play it? They didn't. They didn't have a hole in the bottom. They they would throw it into the barrel and they had to get a whole, ladder. We have a whole series of PSA ads on television, uh, heritage moments for Canada, and one of them is James Naismith making inventing basketball. I was in Canada. Yeah, oh, didn't know this. Good for you, man. I thought the Mayans invented basketball. Throwing the heads, lacrosse, the lions. Yeah, the Mayans with their hips. They had hoop. They had like things, and they would try to get the ball in with their hips. I don't know. It's a oh, historical, man. like really historical, like old well, Mayan temple. And yeah. the Mayans are waiting for some money. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're waiting yeah, for a little bit more than that, but <laughs> yeah, they play basketball, but with their hips. All right, here we go. Who number one? Anthony off to a hot start, as always. 
Number one, connected to a cruise ship in 2018. Number two, featured Johnny. Number three, featured a birthday party for a 118-year-old. Number four, premiered on the Disney Channel in June of 2017. Number five, featured the song Monster Mash by Bobby Pickett. Mary. Ooh. Who was it, Matt? I that's heard right. my voice before I heard yours, but I don't know. That's super it's close. I mean, I, yeah, we got to go to the tape. What does Kabuki say? Kabuki, <laughs> Arbiter of Reality. We haven't had an Arbiter of Reality in a while. so we're Anthony. Not... No, you don't get to <laughs> ring in. Horse. No. <laughs> hey, Hold on, Kabuki's Kabuki's rewinding. I thought it was Matt, but I I could be wrong. We I, we gotta need to go to the tape for this one. Bunch of tomato cans in front of me. I got this point on lock. <laughs> <laughs> the suspense is killing you. Yeah. Remember, Kabuki. Even if he can't tell, you gotta pick. Huh? So it's all your fault, Matt. By a hair, Matt. Uh, Hotel Transylvania. Yeah. Hotel Transylvania mm -hmm. is correct. Not a. Bad I was robbed. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very pleasantly surprised. What, you were wrong, Barry? I said I was robbed. Oh, okay. <laughs> if, if you were wrong, I don't feel bad. Your reflexes. Oh. Um, Johnny Fever. His reflexes get better. The <laughs> more. <laughs> classic, classic episode of WKRP. Classic. classic. Bing! Bing. <laughs> Just, uh, so close. Anyway, here we go. Uh, clue number one. Mentioned in the 1983 B-52 song, Song for a Future Generation. I don't even know. Rock Lobster. Clue number two. Pam referenced this on NBC's The Office when discussing a change to her desk around the holidays. Man, this guy really likes that office show. <laughs> oh. Anthony. Go. Hot tamales. Hot tamales is correct. I'm singing the damn song in my head. Like that guy's good. He's good. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ricky. I'm the prince. All right, here we go. Clue number one. Involves steel wire. Clue number two. Its roots go back to the 1400s. It's what? It's roots. roots. Its roots go back to the 1400s. <laughs> I just like hearing Lance say roots. <laughs> its roots go back to the 1400s, fucker. <laughs> One day you'll learn to speak English, Lance. Fuck Not you. under my roof. <laughs> <laughs> Quiver three. The size of the balls vary between men and women. Number four involves measurements. I know what the second word is. Number five. Anthony. Go. Hammer toss. And... Number oh, five. Christ. Hammer seed, throw. Seed. Barry. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Hammer throw. <laughs> Hammer throw. You didn't say your name, You didn't say your, say your name. I did. I totally did. I said Forrest Hammer Time. Go to Kabuki. I said it. You said Hammer Time. Hammer Time. Hammer Time. Hammer time. That's hammer time. That's right. hammer time. Wait, you're you telling me that. there's been two Hammer questions in this game? Yes. Why would you say Hammer Time? <laughs> hammer Time is wrong. I said no, I know, but the other, it, hammer, hammer Throw is right? I don't know. I said Hammer Throw. Go ahead. Uh, 
swear to God, I said my name. I did hear <laughs> Forrest say hammer throw. I called Forrest at the end. Hammer throw, but I didn't hear him say his name. I didn't hear him Can say his name back? either. It might not have got picked up on the iPad. I noticed he doesn't pick up everything, but I, and I and I want, but I I, re, I request Kabuki, please please check to see. Oh, no, wait, <laughs> uh, give them both a point. They're not going to move it on. It doesn't. No, matter. no. no I, all right, all right, fine. Barry and Forrest both get a point it because, does, oh. because all these are crybabies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hammer toss is technically correct, also, by the way. But I'll let him back. We know how this game works. Really? Out. Well, well, I'll just, I'll just look at the bottom of of the I, card I here. You. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> the card. card does supersede the rule booklet. That's that's yeah. Common. Card, okay. It's a card, it's different than the rules. Use the card. Clear one. <laughs> Technically, died in the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Of course. Go for it. What? Harry Truman <laughs> is correct, but you really need to be using something that the microphone yeah. actually uh, works. All right, I'm, I'm going to switch from. I'm going to switch. Sorry, I'm going to switch from uh, names to the uh, the. Actual- I, I I got I got like every other word in that sentence. Okay, there's a microphone thing. <laughs> 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 I'll just yell. <laughs> That'll go over well with your wife, I'm sure. You're Good screaming point. hammer time in the basement. <laughs> Here we go. You want up? Blue number one. Often, ha- how did you know that, by the way, for it? <laughs> Uh, honestly, I just, I knew he was a famous person. I had him in my back pocket, and I took a shot. It was a guess. <laughs> but, but, but it, the, like the actual Harry Truman, like the Harry Truman most people know, the president of the United States, like, like it was a guy also named Harry Truman that died at Mount St. Helens. He famously, like, re- refused to leave his cabin that he lived on, you know, on the mountain. Like, they were like, well, you need, need to go. If I would have remembered that Harry Truman was a president, then yeah, I probably wouldn't have guessed it. But I didn't remember. <laughs> he was paid off the big time. So, so you, I know that. So did you just remember Harry Truman just as a name that you've heard yes, before? Yeah, in the back pocket. He right. only knows it from we didn't start a the shot. fire. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, Harry Truman, Doris Day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's probably. Ah, uh, number one. Often has connections to the Super Bowl. Anthony. What? Go, Anthony. Half time. What's your name? Half time. Uh, That's what I was do you still want to call in? He buzzed. Uh, I will abstain. You will abstain? Oh, okay. you got a lucky. Like Number two. Connected to millions of people. Number three has global profits of one hundred fifty billion dollars a year. Anthony can't bring in Anthony. <laughs> Clue number four connected to labor. Anthony. <laughs> Clue number five is often connected to children. Barry. <laughs> Final that, clue. That's clue, right? Final okay. clue. Illegally transporting people. Force. For, go for it, Forrest. Human trafficking is correct. <laughs> yes. What does it have to do with the Super Bowl? I got three. Am I yeah. The, what the, what? So weird. I have no, no we can hear you now, so that helps. Okay. <laughs> Wait, just, hold on. Just hold on. Let me get the full effect here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Clue number one created by Frank Elliskew. Clue number two involves voting. Clue number three 
is 45 pounds. Anthony. Go for it. Heisman Trophy. Heisman Trophy is correct. Nice. Model after Ed Smith. You know, Ed Smith. Famous Norm Macdonald joke when uh God of who is it? It, it when he when he when he uh hosted the Espies and he said uh uh oh yeah let's give it up for Charles Woodson the first <laughs> the first the first uh first defensive player to ever win the Heis Heisman Heisman Trophy yeah no can take that away from you unless 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 you of course you kill your wife if your ex wife and a waiter <laughs> oh god oh god and the entire crowd was like. Oh, <laughs> his face was priceless. Ah, <laughs> uh, you knew he was just desperate to tell that joke. Ah, uh, here we go. Number one includes overrun. Number two, there are dozens of options. Number three, exploded in popularity in 2016. <laughs> Number four, founded in California in 2012 by a former attorney who was looking for a snack. Number five, found in freezers. Luca. Go for it. Uh, hot thoughts. And but you did ring in, no, which, is, which is important. That's me. Uh, final clue. This is sold by the pint with stevia and is connected to the word creamery. Five. Of course. Go. Toddy. What? Hot toddy. <laughs> That's, That's what I said. <laughs> it's not whiskey and tea. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Five, four, oh, what is his three, name? ice cream. Two, one, and I'll get a point. <laughs> Halo top. That's I what it is. Jen eats that shit. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's the <laughs> HT initials. HT. I had I had to Google it, and if yeah, it's like this weird like. Good. Is, is it good? It's actually it's actually one of the few, um, ice creams they make that you can have like when you're on um, um Atkins. Well, like, yeah, any of those low no carb things. Oh yeah, yeah. but it's like it's it's one of the few ones I actually could eat. That actually tasted like something. Hmm. I had never heard of it before. I'd never heard of it. I didn't think that would be it. Yeah. Makes me wonder what kind of questions we're going to see in volume four. <laughs> <laughs> was what my was neighbor that? in 1984? <laughs> <laughs> John in one, Jacobs. What was am in I one off of right now? <laughs> what, what color am I thinking of? Yes. Uh, clear one. Mostly written by Maurice Starr. Written or written? Mostly by Maurice Starr. <laughs> written. <laughs> written. Written. <laughs> written. 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 Clear number two. Debuted in the late 80s. Clear number three. Was the title of an album? That reached number one on the Billboard charts. Clue number four. That album featured five top ten hits and five guys. Oh, I know, I know who it is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Clue number five. Included the line, don't cross our path, because you're gonna get stomped. Of course. Go for don't, it. Five. Four, three, two, one, and 
Final clue. Jonathan, Joey, Jordan, Danny, Matt, and Matt, go. Hang tough. Yeah, man. <laughs> New kids on the block. Isn't it, isn't New it, kids isn't on it the block. Hanging tough? Well, I'll give it to him. Oh, wait, 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 Nobody's going to catch you anyway, is Anthony. Matt robbed Whoa! both of us tonight, eh? <laughs> Here we go. Four left. <laughs> Anybody's game. Now? Ah. <laughs> Aldi? <laughs> yep. I just want to make sure you're still there, man. Uh, maybe you fall asleep. I don't know. <laughs> Number one, started by Ron Rice in his garage after a five hundred dollar loan from his father. Luca, go for it. Uh, Hewitt Packard, and that would be uh, HP. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have Wait, accepted. Man. I would have accepted <laughs> Hewitt Packard though. I would. <laughs> I'm out. Aldi. <laughs> Aldi, go. Hot topic. And oh, good oh, guess, man. man. Nice stab. Oh, we're going to try guesses out? Uh, All right, Anthony. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Hawaiian Tropic. Hawaiian Tropic is correct. Well oh. done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, connected to protection, connected to Playboy Playmates, appeared in Dumb and Dumber, involved in no. swimsuit competitions. Well, excuse my friend. He's a little mm -hmm. slow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Clue number one. It's fun. Debuted in 1985. Clue number two. Connected to a civil war. Clue number three. Connected to fertility. Matt, go for it. Hormone therapy. And clue number four involves Martha's. Martha's? Martha's? Like, Martha's? like the Martha's? <laughs> what? Clue number five has won Emmys and Golden Globes. Final clue. Elizabeth Moss stars in this dystopian Hulu oh, series. Oh, Barry. Barry. Uh, uh, Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale. Oh, Forrest, you can still catch Anthony. You're the only one that can. Sure. Yeah, I got a fake point. We should have went back to the camera, but hey, whatever. <laughs> just, just say any word that's close to the word, and we'll give it to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be close. I, I agree. I agree. Wait, wait, Lance, no. Lance, what does the card say for the? Oh. <laughs> just, just saying. Because does the card fails, say good? What we go by what the card says. <laughs> Answers should be pronounced correct. This is clue number one. <laughs> Answers should be pronounced correctly. Before playing, your group could decide to be more casual about this rule. In that case, the host would be the ultimate judge of whether or not an answer is acceptable. Bam! Forrest. Done! <laughs> clue number one. Appeared in 1998's Rushmore. Clue number two. Connected to 2014's Boyhood. Forrest. Go for it. Howard Taft. Eh. <laughs> He's a president, wasn't he? Was he a president too? Mm -hmm. Clue number three. Connected to ZZ Top, Destiny's Child, and Minute Maid.
Clue number four. Connected to 1994's Reality Bites. Good movie. Clue number five. Founded in the 1830s. Final clue. Known as Space City. Five. Barry. Four, go. Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas is correct. Well done, Barry. Well done. You're having a good little run today. Uh, I'm almost stoned enough. Houston, right. Tennessee. <laughs> Houston, Tennessee. Also oh, correct. Man. Also correct. We'll accept... We'll accept <laughs> Well, except Houston, Tulsa, as well. Tulsa. It wouldn't yeah. take mm -hmm. Howard Taft. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, here we go. Clue number one. Final one. First connected to Wickets and H. H. Stevenson in 1858. <laughs> Clue number two. Is connected to Magic. Clue number three. Often causes objects Anthony. to go. Hat trick. Hat trick is correct. Ooh. Ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner. Ding, ding, ding. Chicken winner. dinner. <clears throat> Good one, yeah. Anthony. Refs try to take it away from you. You still pull it out. Yeah. Yeah. They... Can't wait. <laughs> It is it is it is awesome when you're at a at a game and a hat trick gets 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 scored. Man, just all the all the all the crud that gets thrown out in the ice and they just have to stop and sweep the whole thing and get it all off there. And just like I know people that go to they that, that religiously go to hockey games that like bring a shit hat with them so they don't <laughs> throw a good hat out. Like they go they go buy some, you know, one dollar Kendall oil, you know, trucker hat. You know, just to... Do you know what's even more amazing, actually, than the actual hat trick thing? Have you ever seen the bear toss? No, but I've seen the squid toss before. So oh, the bear place. toss is really cool. So they do it... I know they do it in, in Boston. They do it in a couple of places. But they collect teddy bears to send to kids in children's hospitals. Mm -mm. And they do the countdown, and literally the entire thing of ice gets just covered with people throwing teddy bears on the ice. I mean, like I mean, you never I mean. believe you'll see that many teddy bears in one in one pile, but yeah, it's it's huge. It's pretty cool. Yes. Um. Yeah. No. Uh. The the squid toss that happens at the uh, Detroit Red Wings games. That when the because it because it takes eight wins an octopus an octopus yes octopus sorry octopus talks. <clears throat> that's gotta be messy <laughs> not uh, real octopi oh, oh okay. they're real octopus they're real. Oh, no, no, they, no they, they had one that, like they had one where real. it was something um like they had over like forty or fifty of them and one was some like freaking forty pound octopus that somebody had caught or something and threw <laughs> on the ice just. Yeah, yeah, it was just uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's, it's weird, you know. Just uh, hockey fans are are a special breed. Yes, they. Are, uh, they well, they're to... in the cold a lot of the year. You know, I mean, <laughs> it messes with a man. But oh. Well, it hasn't been eight wins in a long time, so. It's well, no, now it's sixteen because they put they put an octopus on either side of the of the thing, so now it's sixteen wins to to win the whole deal. So what now? The fans go with a, a octopus every game until this happens, or. <laughs> no, it's usually. Yeah, it's I don't even know how to get start. in with like they have a bag game somewhere. One. With... Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> smuggle them in. They <laughs> smuggled an octopus. Well, that's the one thing. How do you get a forty-pound octopus into the, into, yeah. the, into the game? I just, I don't understand. Um, 
guessing security is pretty lax on that one. <laughs> you know. No, they're not. They, 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 <laughs> every time it happens, they wonder how many people got it in there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go use the restroom, uh, and I'm gonna come back with another beverage, and then we can talk about any board games we may have played recently, and and I can like tune Ooh. out because I, I barely listen to that section. I'm what gonna go take the dog out because he's pacing. Yeah, where's my dog? Yeah. <clears throat> Nobody go anywhere. I say we all sign off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bought I bought a new pedal today, Matthew. What'd you buy? The boss uh distortion D two. Oh, overdrive? Cool. Yeah. I haven't uh, I messed with it too much. Is it is it is it black? No, it's yellow. Oh, I had the heavy metal. Right. Okay. Cool. I haven't played with it too much yet. So me and Lance were talking earlier. What is the worst rule book you ever read for a game other than a, a war a war game? Mm, good question. Um I mean, there's like non-English language ones are pretty rough. Yeah, they got always are. Why is this not working? What the fuck? This never works for me. Sorry. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Good question. Me, it was the first fifty-first state. <laughs> Actually, most of portals we were talking about that earlier. Most of portals are early games. Not sure how they do now. I haven't played a portal game in a while. That Mars game was pretty bad. Yeah, that was. I I spent an entire day to try to play that game, and yeah. it was just. I wanted to like that one too. I really did. Everybody wanted to like that one. <clears throat> that Witcher one he did too was pretty bad, but uh, they did that through Fantasy Flight though. Which one? The Witcher game he did. I thought it was boring, but that oh, was I pretty rough. Uh, yeah, that was a real. I mean, God, the hype on that one was huge. Not hype, but you know, excitement for it. It's like everybody, because everybody loves Robert Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, yeah. I think that finally delivered. What? Oh, their uh, the, their new one. The new, the newest. I forget when it funded. It was like years ago. Yeah. You know, big delay. Yeah, I kind of gave up on Portal. They just keep reparenting the same game. You know, newer version. 51st State Deluxe version. 51st State Ultimate. <laughs> you know, Robin and Russo. Can't live without an edition. Whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Collector's edition. Yeah. When did that originally? 17,000 backers found that one. Isn't that crazy. Uh, oh, it's a good game. Uh, 2021. Three, three, tw- almost uh, three years ago to the day. 323-2021. I bet he'll be glad to be done with that one. Yeah, I'm sure. I was hoping for a new Puerto Rico artwork, but I have not seen a piece of it. No. Nah. Why are you hoping for it, Scott? Just well, I just want to see what they come up with. I mean, uh, okay, <laughs> it's supposed to be a deluxe anniversary edition, you know, like like Castles of Burgundy, you know. Yeah, uh, but they put out a piece of AI artwork and retracted it because of uh, Robinsberger. <clears throat> basically, asked them not to do any AI artwork for the game. Yeah. I haven't seen any of the if they have if they've uh, updated or not. I saw a video. Whose game was it? Oh, give me a minute. I'll remember the name. Still, they it's, were still like... a, it's still a blurry photo of the old box. Is it? <clears throat> yeah, they've not released any new artwork. <clears throat> well, yeah. Now guys... they got a higher artist. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think about AI in 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 board games? It's common. Uh. 
It's coming. The genie's out of the bottle. Yeah. I think it's a controversial topic. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it's in everything now. I mean, you know, it's, it's coming. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's going to be plenty of games with AI artwork. Yeah. I don't think that's a good thing, though. No, nah, neither do I. Not, not since it basically can't. It can't give any attribution to where it borrowed the work from. Based on what the way I understand how it works. Are, are you like? Are they ever going to make laws around this thing? Or uh, is Canada? I don't know. I know. I have no idea. I don't know if the U.S. is looking. I know they're looking into it. I just don't know how how yeah. how deep. But is Canada doing that or? You don't know. Uh, not really. We we usually follow what you guys do. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> now, with the whole TikTok thing, you guys are, are might cancel like TikTok or something. Then Canada's gonna do it too. Yeah, it's gonna ban. Yeah, it's gonna ban yeah. it. You think it's gonna vote? Go I know uh, it's the house. Yeah, we'll see. There's there's freedom of speech things involved. We'll see. Yeah, but well, they won't ban it if it sells to a different company. An American company, they I believe is what they wanted. Yeah. Um. But even still, well, I don't see the point of that. They're still going to send all the shit to China. That, you know what they're? It's just going to go through America. It's just a shell game, basically. You know. <clears throat> it has to sell within six months. Six. After if a, if the bill passes. If the bill passes, yeah. And you said it went through the house, so it's still got to go up to the Senate. That's part of the house. Yeah. So I have a couple months at least. And it was overwhelmingly passed, which is weird. Nothing ever, no. nothing in America is bipartisan this way, except TikTok. I love that TikTok mm. is like the biggest threat. Because it's fucking they can't figure... in the office. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, I think only like, it was a very few amount of people did not, did not, uh, Vote for it. Um, like, not even yeah, very few. Well, we, Lance, we, ran, uh, we ran our dragon fight tonight. Oh yeah, how'd it go? Two deaths. Good. Permanent. All? Permanent. Mm. You don't have resurrection in your world. Well, yeah, we do. I mean, like, they're not like just out; they're dead. They have to do some pretty serious stuff to resurrect them, though. Um. Hmm. There was an old. It's it's. I think you can still track. I mean, you can track it down pretty well. Um, and I loved it. Um, I've always been a big fan of death being pretty. Um, uh, permanent. Yeah, I mean, um, um, God, what was it called? I'm just sorry about this. Uh, no, they, um, or, or making it really, really painful, right? You know, like, like lose a level, uh, permanently lose a point of con constitution, um, sure. you know, like things where it was like, it, like it affected you pretty, you know, I, one of the things I absolutely despised was like later on, it was like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, my guy died. Oh, okay. Well, get another 5,000 gold pieces of diamonds out. We'll just res we'll get cast true res on you. You know, and I always just kind of hated that. It made it kind of pointless. Um, we incorporated a, you know, about five years ago, we just kind of ditched um, uh, the resurrection. Actually, it was in a campaign I ran that lasted almost two years, or a little over two years, actually. Um, we ruled that, like, the, 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 the magics that would allow people to raise people from the dead uh were, were like long since forgotten and um, i remember like the cool. party the party cleric he found a scroll in some tomb that actually had a, a, a it was a scroll of, <laughs> that had resurrection on it and like and he was just so he had it and he held on to it and of course the head of his order who ultimately was like working against him he had shown it to him and he was like holding it and he's like, look, it's like, it's, it's the power that, that, that came back or whatever. And, 
And he said, oh, obviously this is tainted and cursed. You know, it's like, it's a good thing you didn't cast the spell. And he, he threw it into the fire in front of him. And, uh, and in reality, he had, he had used an illusion to throw another scroll right. in to get rid of it. And he had kept it. And he was like, oh my God, are you eating? You know, he was just like, and then so later on when they actually like, when the party actually went and assassinated the person they were going to bring and try to put on the throne um, later, uh, he used that scroll of resurrection to bring that guy back. And they were like, how is this guy still alive? And they realized because there was a mark on him or something. Oh, okay. It was one of my it was one of my favorite moments of, of the good. whole of the whole thing. They were like, well now we now we will be able, you know, just he was so he was so happy that like and then it was like, what? That's cool. Yeah, you know, I'm a big believer in you're dead, you're dead. You know, you just there ain't no coming back. Oh, they they'll easily roll up new characters if 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 they need to, but I mean I I'm fine to explore explore uh resurrection yeah i'm making a i'm making a how it started how it's going meme right now to post of a photo how it started a photo of the battle how it's going just two tombstones with them two names on it. oh nice yeah, God, what was the name? Raise the Dead, it was called. And it was it was an old uh Nicomancer Games module. And the whole thing about it was um uh when you're when a player character died, it was a way that you could run a like um uh, an adventure that actually was to bring that person back to life. Oh, and, yeah. and and there, and you actually got to incorporate the person who was dead could actually had actually had to do stuff in like the spirit world and stuff like that to help the party to bring oh, them back cool. as well. It was it was actually I mean I, I don't I don't know if I ever used it. I definitely like stole a bunch of shit from it. Um, you know to uh, you know, but um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was good. It was, it was a it was a it was a it was a good little uh good little adventure that they ran back in the day mm -hmm. um oh uh, well anybody ever uh play anything cool in the last like week or so hey yeah. forest back everybody Forrest back. i have a quick recommendation before uh game talk What's that? Go for it. The show called The Offer. Have you heard of this one? Oh, uh, the Mafia one? It's about the making of The Godfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. It's great. I thought we talked about that. Did we talk about it? Uh, maybe we already did. Like a couple oh. years ago when it came out. Yeah. Did, did they have the scene where Finally Coppola's mother talks him into putting his sister in the movie? Uh, no. Uh, I don't That's think they did. Any, uh... This is all about The Godfather only so far. <laughs> What's that? What, anyway, what are you sitting in the movie? I might be behind, but I'm uh, enjoying it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. That's cool. I heard good things about it. Yeah, yeah, it was time. a good series. Yeah, I like the uh, the actor. What what is his name? Um, oh yeah, the, the, from... the producer. He was from Whiplash. Yeah, oh the producer. I don't know who the producer. And Top Gun yeah. and yeah, he's, um, in... he's no I longer a kid. Nah, he's in his twenties. Yeah, I don't remember his name either. Now. I wish I would. Yeah, I don't remember. But the guy who plays Robert Evans is pretty good. To Bob Evans. He, yeah, his voice is so great. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a good show. Awesome. Okay, that's it. Oh, I got a recommendation. If you, if if you uh, if you're a fan of um, uh, games like either Dwarf Fortress or uh, uh, RimWorld. If you enjoy those things, um, by the way, uh, we play tested our first very alpha version of RimWorld, and it is fantastic. RimWorld, the board game. So look for that in 2025. Um, Can't wait to hear about that for eight months. Shut up. <laughs> um, uh, you don't like it? Find another show to show up every Wednesday. Dude, there was a RimWorld expansion that just came out. Yeah. Barry, when are you starting a show with Rod, though? 
<laughs> <Good rod. laughs> we'll talk to Richard next week. <laughs> uh, no, so we're gonna uh, call it Where's Lance? <laughs> Shut up your ass. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, uh, against the storm, very, very good. Uh, instead of like having one long, drawn out, um, uh, uh, process, it would make for a great RPG world too, uh, Matt. Um, uh, but instead of having this long process, like basically you have to, you have to, like, your goal is to like go to a spot, create a, um, a successful settlement. And then once that's successful, you move on to another spot and you start all over and you make it. And you only have a certain amount of time before the storm comes and wipes out all of the settlements you, you've made. So you need to you need to basically have successive settlements that make it across this overland map to get to this point where you can actually then it's like you're basically fighting against this storm that's destroying oh, okay. the world. And then when you get there, if you can make it to that spot and you can defeat that spot with the settlement, then that's like it 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 uh saves a certain like a larger portion because you start off just this one bastion this one city and like the storms all around you and you slowly build it up and then you get to that point but along the way it's like it's all these cool things it's just it's very much you know you have different workers that you send off to do things collect wood build things make things whatever and you get to do it i have been it is utterly fascinating and fun it is it is i can't get into it you could get into against the storm. It's just too slow. It's something about it. I can't. I can't hit the hit the times it. three. Make them move faster. Yeah, I don't know. I Speaking can't. of Bastion, did you hear they're re they're rebooting uh, Never Ending Story? Oh, are they? It's, they weren't Pretty kidding. Cool. Get it? They weren't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Huh? I wonder if that's uh, a good thing. I don't know, man, but I, I've never watched that freaking <laughs> show again after I had to watch that poor poor horse drum. So, I mean... They kill was... one horse, you get upset. It was the way... It, it wasn't like the horse like fell off a cliff or got shot. It's like, no, it just slowly it sinks really into drown. the swamp. Yeah. Are you Is talking it about... me or like kids' Are movies in the crawl? 80s were really fucked up? No. <laughs> yeah. You know. In, in never ending story when he when he's when he's when they're trying to they're trying to get across and it's the the, the marsh of hopelessness or whatever yeah. it was and then the wow. and then and then the horse gets sad and so he, he couldn't get and and then it I gets sucked yeah, down and that. dies a and train the quicksand dies. right it's to prove a point it's hopeless the <laughs> the saddest fucking cosplay i ever saw was this kid it was a meme of this kid uh dressed as um as the uh the 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 hero in the story and it was just the horse from the neck up and then mud around it and it was on the floor and the kids like trying to track it out it was brilliant it was so good <laughs> yeah That's yeah yeah, kids' movies in the eighties were fun. Transformers, they went up everybody you loved. <laughs> you know, first half hour of the movie, gone. <laughs> yeah. Imagine being yeah. a six-year-old watching that. <laughs> well, that's a cartoon. Yeah. What was that other one? The Labyrinth? The one with the freaky cold I never saw thing. that. <laughs> David Bowie. It was David Bowie. Yeah, I never saw it. Yeah. That. It's worth watching once. It's not great. No, no, not a. But there's a couple good parts. <laughs> that was... that is worth watching just for the uh, just for the moment where they're, they're gonna... the, the magic dance. Well, that that and the fact that they're when they're gonna when they're gonna get rid of they're gonna throw the people out the out the uh, out the window or whatever and 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 make a trot. Wait, I still function. <laughs> and then it starts to. Want to bet? <laughs> As he takes him out the out the out the door. Are we talking about the same movie? The Transformers <laughs> movie, yeah, baby. Transformers. Oh, I, I didn't know you were talking about Transformers movie. Never mind. Well, <laughs> did I, yeah, it, it was, was a Labyrinth. jump for me too, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were talking about Lambert also. I was. No, you were talking about Transformers. So Labyrinth. I thought we were. We well, moved about on to Labyrinth. Labyrinth five minutes yeah, ago. We're talking about Labyrinth. <laughs> you brought up, you know what? You know, fuck. Fuck all I went Transformers <laughs> Labyrinth. Nice. You brought Transformers while people dying. <laughs> you did, you stone bastard. 
Yeah, and then while well, we went on the labyrinth no, with the troll people. Went on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> David Bowie. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? I miss the old way we used to just you can mute people. <laughs> he can still do that. I got some more clarification on uh, how I'm going to be paid. If anybody's interested, I know it was a hot topic last time I was here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I please tell me how he's going to screw What you. happened in the old job? I don't know why you th think he's going to screw me. He's done, so, like, it is so not what you think it is, Lance. So essentially, uh, I'm going to be an independent contractor who's going to do Kickstarter stuff. So just, I'm going to have my Fiverr. And they'll be at slightly higher prices. I'm going to put them up higher prices. My idea, not his. And then through uh, Hero Time Manufacturing, so you reach out to them, and you're making a game with them, and you're launching a Kickstarter. They'll be like, hey, would you be interested in talking to our in-house Kickstarter consulting, whatever the hell they're going to call me. And so then I get attached to the email chain, and you tell me about So how it's going to work is... Hirsch is going to pay for a certain number of hours of Kickstarter work for the customer based on how much potential he sees in the Kickstarter. I think that's pr pretty much going to be the gist, or maybe that's what I'm going to do. I don't know. Um, but, and then based on that, it might be like, so this customer is going to get one hour. This customer is going to get two hours. This customer is going to get three hours. And then he's going to pay me. So payment's going to be, you know, pretty normal. And then it's still just going to be, he's hopefully going to be sending me 30 hours a week. And then if I want to work more, so let's just say that they reach out and her, you know, has a payment allotment of, they, they get three hours of my time and they end up wanting like a gameplay video. They want a Kickstarter critique and they want, you know, me to do uh, a blind play test video where I'll just straight up blind play test it. I'll read the rules out loud and explain how I'm thinking about it, blah, 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 blah. And that, that totals out to say 10 hours. So Hirsch pay me the three hours and then, the customer themselves is then going to pay for the additional seven hours. And for now it's going to go to Hirsch and then uh, it'll go to me, but eventually I'm going to need to establish an LLC. He was telling me, and he's like, we can help you with that when you need it to get there. When we, when we get it to that consistency. Uh, and then we talked about the items that he's going to help uh, that he's going to purchase. So pretty much just donate or just be like, here, here's the stuff you need, which is going to be a new iPad with uh, going from, not the newest iPad Pro, which is going to be announced in like the next few weeks, unless it is announced, in which I guess I might ask for that because it's supposed to be amazing. But it's going to have way better editing software. It goes from iMovie to uh, I think it was uh, something something Pro, which I guess is like a huge deal. So I'm Final Cut say, Pro. Yeah, I think that might be it. Apparently, Final it's cut. Final Cut. Yeah, apparently it's a big deal. So that'll yeah. be awesome because I, I really, I mean, I can edit. I just don't normally take the time to do it. But when I'm getting paid, you know. If I'm getting paid a nice wage and consistent, I can definitely do it, especially considering it's just going to be also helping build up the Bowers Game Corner brand because I'm going to be putting out more content for more games that are coming on Kickstarter that hopefully are going to do well because, you know, I can hopefully help people steer them away from some obvious potholes that sometimes first time creators hit, you know, and it's a win win for everybody. Like I am stupid excited about this opportunity. And I think I earned it because I crushed it at Gamma, and he saw that. And I know you. I I, I love the fact you're going gloom and doom. I I, I appreciate it. I do. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. What's up? Because because what you said is two different things. So if, if they're go. going to Kickstarter, yes, then they should not have any sort of printing contract yet because what if they don't fund they don't they're going to be paying for the hours of service well here's the thing Hirsch is essentially going to eat the cost of that banking on it he does the same thing with art or essentially every customer that reaches out to us that has any sort of potential will get a certain number of hours of art we'll just help them where it's just like oh yeah that's included in there it's a nice little thing they do and it's essentially going to be the same way for Kickstarter. We're like, we want to see you, because the, the principle is we want to see our customers succeed. And we, if you're going to Kickstarter, we have someone who's hopefully going to help you succeed more and make more games. And it's just a win-win for everybody. Like, I think it's brilliant. I think it sets them apart in a, in a sea of manufacturers that don't offer stuff quite like this. 
It's different. It's innovative. I love it. I, I, I at them love it. I love my boss. I do. I think he's a fantastic boss. And I he's and I no longer your boss. He <laughs> is until the end of the month. At the end of the month, I get my but final paycheck. Thing, so, so, so the thing is, you're saying that they'll contact him. You are going to be an independent contractor. So therefore, you are not the in-house Kickstarter guy. I don't know exactly. You are a referral <laughs> that he's going to give. I don't know how he's going to phrase it. I always phrase it as our in-house artist, when in actuality, if you're splitting hairs, he's he has the exact same deal, I'm pretty sure, as, as I do. Where, like, if a customer needs 12 hours of artwork, yeah, maybe her should pay for the first two, but then the customer and I make a deal to to pay for the rest of it. If cool. you need editing help, I, I can help if you need editing help. If you get too much work, I can edit on the side for you. Well, you, you could you could be a contractor for Forrest, who could be a contractor <laughs> for that's well, right. That, that's also the other exciting what's the, thing is he what's told the job me Forrest in house <laughs> What is the job specifically? He told me specifically. He's like, and if we get I, I could definitely see us going over 30 hours a week. So uh consider looking into to finding others some help. Uh what'd you say, Scott? What's the job? What is the, the what are the what do you have to do? The job is Bowers Game Corner. Like running a fiver of Bowers Game Corner, except and I will, I'll have a fiver, but then also I am help I, I do the work for the, the hero time because we get hundreds of people looking to make their games and a lot of them come to Kickstarter or want to go to Kickstarter. And maybe they don't know that much about Kickstarter. And so when your manufacturer says, hey, here's your quote, we got somebody here who can but help you. They're not the manufacturer. Don't do too much work without getting, a, getting paid friends. first. Sorry. Don't, don't I'm do going to get paid. paid. I, I've gotten no, no, paid least... every month. I got oh, paid okay, for, sorry. I thought you were not Christmas. I got a bonus. Right, 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 right. Last month, I got a No, 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 no. no. But at that point, you were an employee of his. I'm still going to be in the Teams chat. I'm still going to have probably the same email. Like, I'm still going to essentially be under the umbrella. It's okay. just... Okay, I'm a... so, so here's, here's, here's the question. Is he guaranteeing you 30 hours of pay a week? He's gonna send me third. Yeah, that was what we pretty much said. Yes. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. So what you said, what you said before was he thinks it'll be around thirty hours a week. It may be more, but also you could talk to thousands of people, and it doesn't mean a thing unless they sign on the line and send the money. Show me the money. I have been working for the guy. He's paid me regularly, and I'm going to oh, be. You worked for him. I'm you essentially going to be working for him now. And no, yes, you're not. And yes, I do believe I am getting the thirty hours because, as once, I mentioned, he's become, going to pay for a certain number of hours. So if your game you looks like it's great, he might say this guy gets six hours. So Mark, why do you think you're putting an LLC together? Oh, unless your geez. contract says. That you are guaranteed to be paid for 30 hours a week, regardless of the amount of work that's sent to you. And anything over 30, you will be compensated for also. If you does not, if the contract to be an independent contractor does not say you are getting paid for 30 hours a week, then you are not getting paid 30 hours a week. <laughs> he can tell you all he wants about how many things you you had how many people come to the booth at Gamma? <laughs> Hundreds? How many contracts were signed from those hundreds of people? That's not how the business works. That is it's how the business term. works. <laughs> no, it's not. Not with manufacturing. You talk back and forth. You go back and forth and back and forth and back Wait. and forth and back and forth. You with have the simpler customers, you don't. Back, what if it's like back, a... You go back uh -huh. and forth. You go back and forth. And then you, those people <laughs> are, are pretty much locked into you. In theory. Not always. No, I wouldn't go that far because most of the time they send out, you know, just because we hit them early with a great quick quote, if someone hits them, you know, say a week or two later, you know, they're not going to be done because you still have to, a lot of people want to prototype. 
A lot of people get the sample. You got to ship the sample. You got to get all the artworks done. And then you got to get the artwork confirmed by the in-house artist where it's like, take like there's, it's not, no. That's just not. I'd love to be wrong. <laughs> I really would. I I, I would but love what to be I'm wrong telling too. you is independent <laughs> contractor means you work, whatever you work is what you get paid for. So if he only sends you five hours of work, you're getting paid for five hours. And then yes. here's the other question. Do you get to keep your own independent fiber? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. here's, so, yeah. here's so, the, wait, wait, hold on, Forrest. Okay. Hold Go on. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm I'm Joe Schmo. I Hi, call, Joe Schmo. I call Hearst and say, I'm looking for a quote for my game. I'm going to be bringing it to Kickstarter. And he goes, hey, by the way, we have an in-house Kickstarter person. Would you be interested in working with them? Puts you in the contact of the thing, and you and I talk, and I'm like, eh, I'm not ready to do that right now. And then I do a different game, and I go, hey, Forrest. I go to your regular fiber, and I'm like, Forrest, I'd like to do you have to report that to Hearst? No. Why? Why would I? He doesn't care. You so know what, that for sure? But what is the per you that's the point? You don't know for sure. The point is if he brought you that, he's got to make something off of it. If he brought you that person to begin with, it's like it's like real estate. So if somebody you hire as your real estate agent, and then you can't just go and have someone else show you a house. It's a contract. That's what a contract means. So if he brings you the person, and if he's getting even a, 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 a nibble off of what you're getting, if you're getting 90% of what that person's paying and he's getting 10% just for the referral fee, okay? Anybody that he has, has, come, has contacted him that he's put you in touch with, whether it's for that project or not, technically, he could still collect it, make, charge you for a referral fee for everything you do for that person. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure he's not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. I Don't pull a gasket in. <laughs> he wants me to keep working conventions. Like, we're talking about, like, sponsorships and stuff like that. I'm not I'm not worried about not being taken care of. I Because here's the bottom line. I also see how many people they have in the Kickstarter process. I know that there's no shortage of these people who would be interested in these services and and just the the fact that that's just so simple and it's right there like this menu that i'm going to be making and the the artist rob is going to be helping and it's just going to be like you look at the list and you're like oh man i could use some of this stuff and then it's like and yes i do believe that because it was all a little foggy at gamma uh that yeah i'm gonna get 30 hours a week nothing's gonna change pretty much except exactly what I'm doing. And and we'll find out in 10 days. I'm excited. I'm incredibly excited. I've gotten so much more. Like, I clean down here. I got games. I'm starting to shoot more videos. Shot that 53-minute video about the board game bag. I'm excited to get back on the horse and just start making content and crush that it. That you yourself wouldn't buy. <laughs> no, not after seeing the price. I didn't look at the price. I don't look at the price on a Kickstarter because a lot of times I don't even know what the price is going to be. It's like the, the Kickstarter is going to launch next month. I have no clue what the price is going to be. What but up, y'all? Homegrown B-dub. I just looked at the bag. I looked at the bag. Man. Okay. Now, here's the other the other thing to consider. Okay? Consider? Let's, let's say he does have 30 hours of work for you a week. Let's say he has 40 hours of work for you a week. And somebody else comes along and says, hey, Forrest, we want you to do a Kickstarter video for us, and we want to pay you $2,000 to do this video for us. I don't well, know if it's just for me. You broke up there for a second. I well, said, I heard the, hey, Forrest, we got, and then it well, Hey, Forrest, we want you to do a Kickstarter video for us. Somebody comes out from, out from outside of the, this whole situation. Says, we'll pay you $2,000 for videos. 
you don't have time now to do those necessarily because you have 40 hours committed at the whatever rate you're getting for the work you are signed up to do under contract that you have to get done. Yeah. Which means you're going to do a lot of stuff that you don't freaking care about. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be like a job. But, but, it's you're still... going to, but, but you're going to potentially at that point turn down stuff that pays better, that's more interesting. You know, here's here's my thing. And once again, little brother, I just want to shake you. <laughs> just... Everything's been smooth, damn it. But it always is until if, it's not. If, <laughs> if, this, <laughs> if this was such a great offer, and I'm not questioning your abilities or your whatever, your your passion for the board games or anything like that. I'm not I, I, I don't want this to come across as 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 questioning your you or your the quality of your work in any way. But if everything was if if everything you were doing and what you were offering on your channel was like so valuable and so like I need to get this to all of my employees and I need to for I need I need Forrest by my side because he's going to be the guy that's going to bring in all this extra business and everything with his with his abilities and what he can do for these people that are publishing these games. Why would he just keep you as an employee? Why wouldn't he? Why is he making you an independent contractor, which may get paid, might not get paid? Because what happens? What happens if he signs like five, six contracts, or whatever, to to manufacture games? I don't know what his size. Can I, can I answer is or... your first question before we well, get to the next okay, one? Because okay, it's a simple okay. it's a simple answer. And I and I thought I explained it a little bit earlier. So essentially, let's say there's twenty. Kickstarter clients right now. That's that's a very low number. It's actually way more than that. And we reach out to them and 10 of them say, yeah, we're interested in these services. And so essentially how it work is, Hirsch but, would look at it. Okay, but is that, is that an actual number or is that a, a supposition? Like, let's say, is that you saying, let's say five of them said they were interested. Have these people actually expressed interest? Yeah, in, in I've the... made videos for some. I've, I've many... gone through three or four videos but then again it wasn't something that we were actively asking at the time because i was still working with you know 90 other customers potentially or something you know it was like a lot but now it's going to be where that's the primary focus is growing bowers game corner and and by doing a lot of these videos and so essentially how it's going to work is you so, like I said, Hirsch pretty much foots the bill for a couple hours art, and now it's going to be a couple hours of Kickstarter. The basic principle is, you know, let's just say you're paying us both 25 bucks, and you work four hours or something like that. That's 100 bucks that he's spending that hoping that this game is going to, you know, come to fruition. And it's going to make money and get a second, third, fourth print run, be big, whatever. So he's essentially going to be paying for the first two hours. But then if the customer wants more than the two hours, which they most likely will, you know, like it's like oh, an, a gameplay video, like oh yeah, it's, that'd be good to have, uh, or oh, you can get me in contact with a bunch of other reviewers, and you can just do this footwork, or oh, you can you know help me set up a board game geek, or stuff like service things that I know how to do, like just board game generic stuff that I can help you with. And so let's just say you order ten hours of work. So essentially, what's going to happen is this is one of those ones where you pay up front. Normally, the way we we do the manufacturing. You pay half up front when, once you've got like your sample and you approve it. Then we go into, into manufacturing. But you can also pay for stuff in advance. Like say, uh, let's just say you have a token sheet that you're working on and you want it to be like intricate where it will stand up like a dice tower or something like that. So the in-house artist would essentially say, oh, that's going to take, you know, three hours of work. And so Hirsch might pay the in-house artist like two hours, right? And then the extra hour the customer would then pay the, the artist. So essentially there's extra work on top of the two hours. Hopefully I explained that clear. Okay. No, here, not really. Here, here, All here, right. Here, I apologize. Here's the other so I, I understand what he's saying. I don't like for me. So I, I, I use a lot of Photoshopping, so I know like 
how to present the stuff to manufacturers so that they have it. And then they could give me a quote. But I think what what what, what Forrest is saying is if someone uh, doesn't know nothing about like Photoshopping or design or anything, but has a board game idea, then he, they could go to him, tell him, this is my idea, this is my board game, uh, but I don't know how to set it up uh, to be printed or to be cut because you, you have to make these cut lines and everything like that. So he would they, they would pay him to basically do that, that work, or the artists. Uh, the artists to do, do that. So, to do that. Yeah, so, but like so the, Forrest, here's here's the here's the question, okay? Um, when you do your menu thing, yeah. all right, you're gonna lay it out and say, this this particular service costs this much money. I can read you a couple of them. They're like a paragraph each. Oh, that, that, that's no, that's fine. Just I'm just I'm just throwing it generics. Okay. Okay. So this is going to take this much time, or this this much per hour. Okay. Yeah, so it's an hourly they're, rate. They're, and then, now they're paying up front. Yes. Who determines how many hours it's going to take? It's all very clearly laid out in the menu. Like every oh. single service has a very definitive amount of time it is. Consultation okay. is 30 minutes, or if you want a longer one, we can talk up to an hour. You know? Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So so, so you're making you're going to make a video for somebody? Yes. Okay, so you're going to make a video... How do you charge for that? How you are you just, planning? To you just broke up. I didn't hear any of that. You're going to make a video for someone. How do you plan to charge for that? Uh, okay. I can look at it right now. It is the game flavor. Oh, yeah, let me look it up. I'm having trouble loading your messages. Try refreshing. <laughs> oh. What's going on with your internet connection tonight? I don't know. Teams is uh, teams is screwing up right now. Oh, I heard your first I, problem. Teams. I charge by rule book. I charge by rule book size. Like yeah, they have that's to send how I'm me doing it. Yeah, it's like okay. send me the rule book. I'll okay. check. Hold, I'll on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Forest. Yes. So someone wants to play through a video. He just answered. That's the same way he does it. Rule book size. Rule book size. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to load my team. So here's the basic premise. Uh, so for your, I think it's for a gameplay video, it is She's four got... times the maximum length of the game. So if it's a 90 to 120 minute game, it would be four times 120. I felt like that was reasonable. If it's an in depth unboxing video where I like not only unbox it, but talk about the components and how they work gameplay wise, it's like one hour because it's pretty much just reading the rule booklet and explaining it piece by piece. Um, there's the preview. How are you is, unboxing a game that's going on Kickstarter that isn't isn't made yet? Because sometimes they have really nice things that look totally like finished product. I mean, Kickstarter. That's not, that, 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 that is. Okay, but, that's but not a finished product. <laughs> but here, but that's that's the problem. Okay, okay. There, there are so many. I mean, again, let's back up. I hope Anthony and I are wrong. Yes, I and hope. I, and I, and I hope. I hope. This is like the easiest money in the world that you could possibly make. And I hope you make $300,000 a year doing it. It's just this hands of like stacks of cash next to next to the Midas, the <laughs> King Midas, right? I, I hope it is. But dude, this is, I'm just going to tell you what's what I think is going to happen. And I, again, I hope I'm, I'm going to be wrong. This is a guy who you are going to be dependent upon whether or not your coworkers are going to be able to bring in people that are going to a want to use this person as their manufacturer and b are going to want to use your services that is a lot of ifs you are reliant on their you're not actually trying to sell anything to them you're just sitting there waiting for orders to come in it's it's, it's like and so you're essentially saying i have my own personal fiber so i have my public fiber i already have but now i have my own personal fiber that sounds pretty sweet no, not gonna but, complain about that one but no but the, that's not what he's saying that's not but what that's i'm saying what, what i'm saying is is that if I had to rely on other people to bring me my work to make my money, 
then I I I don't re- that isn't that doesn't work for me. Yeah, there's I, an I idiom. Hold on, hold on. There's hold an on. idiom that uh, can me, be me... used. To, hold on. There's an idiom that can be used to sum this whole thing up. You're trading one in the hand for two in the bush forest. <laughs> Wait, and and the thing is, is that he didn't offer you, do you still want to just work for me and I'll give you a wage or do you want to become this? He didn't he offer you. He said, you got the opinion, end of the month, sucker. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> my opinion, it was like, he just basically said, look, There's I'm not going to pay you a salary anymore, but I still want to keep you on to do this other thing for me. And yeah. I'm going to just, and I'm going to trickle dimes your way. Had he said that, that's a completely different thing. It's like, you know what? Can't afford you anymore. We're gonna, but we're gonna. You're our leading supplier that we're gonna recommend all the time. That's that's a completely different. Right, and that's exactly well. The second thing is what what is happening. The second thing you said is what is happening. Yes, right. And but until until that thirty hours a week starts pumping through to you, I wouldn't count on. Yeah, don't pretend like it's like like it's a um, a job. Oh, what's it? Well, once again, I don't, I don't need it, so it's not like the end of the world if it doesn't happen. Well, I understand that, but I mean, and that goes, that goes to another thing as well. What I, where I kind of went on, I got on my, but you just don't, you don't see the world the same way I do, and and you have a different set of values and whatever that I don't understand, and so it's really not up to me to try to like figure out what makes you tick and what makes you happy. I just, it's, it's fine. Um, you, you, my my bet is that within three to six months you will have worked maybe a total of of maybe ooh, in the next three ooh. months. Let's in do the next game. Months, Let's make the next game. three months. You know, no, yes. not, I, no, I am not. I am not going to it's wager. Fixed. I'm not. I am not going to wager go on this. your livelihood. I am not going to wager on. on your livelihood. No, <laughs> I'm just saying mm. that in like. In, in what the next would Chris Cluey say? What would Chris Cluey mm. say, Lance? What would Chris Cluey say that would be a dick thing to do? Would it be? Yeah. My emotion. Know. Really? Yes. You don't wager on somebody bet, else's livelihood. We're not going to bet on you failing. That's a dick move. I disagree. Not to I think face. it's okay. highly entertaining. Forrest, 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 you, you, you said you okay. don't need it. You don't need it. And okay, I love it, by you the way. Are, that's fine. Do you want it? Yeah, I absolutely want okay. it. I love it. That's why All I'm right. putting so much effort into Bowers Game Corner now because I can hopefully just crush it myself and get, just earn it. But the problem, buddy, is is that, and I, I I applaud you. I applaud you for taking that attitude and taking like I want to crush Bowers Game Corner now. I just want to crush this. And I want to, and that's good. I believe it, brother. I believe it. Then, then then go and do that, and I applaud you for doing that. But I also I have known you now. How long ago was that first time we actually really met at, at, at Gen Con? What was that like ten years ago now? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. And and it was like I've known you for a long time. And you are you are you are the guy that 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 You're you, a let unicorn. The, you let the river take its own path. And and it's just like and 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 yes, yeah. there there are things you get jazzed about. Remember, remember when you were going to run for political office? I do, us? I do. And how, and how you said that that was like, God, this is what I'm going to do. In all fairness, my daughter was born, and that no, was, no, you're, no, you gave you gave up on that long before your daughter was born. <laughs> yeah, but I knew I was going to give up on it because there was no way I was going to be able to invest that amount of time. Yeah, like, there was a up, moment. You, where, no, no. I, I mean, I'd have to go back to the old shows, but you gave up on it. I was like, that was he. You were like, it was just a lot of work, it was and I just didn't want to do it. It was <laughs> a lot of work. You know what? Let's. All right, you're right. <laughs> so, you know, Bible. I, 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 you're right. But that. But I will say, the final hammer on the nail was the dog. Right. You know. And again, that's fine. I mean, that nail was. I just, that nail was damn near out. Like I said. I, I know you and I know that like I I have I have a relative that and I'm not saying you're like this person at all, but I have a relative that they're always telling me a story about oh I'm gonna get a job and I'm gonna do do this or I'm gonna go and I'm gonna oh well, yeah once I get this then everything's gonna be fine. And I always and I always just listen to them talk to me about it, and I just say, "Oh, that'll be awesome. That'll be awesome." But I know damn well they're not going to do anything. They're just they're just not going to do it. But they're telling a story, 
because they want to hear somebody else. And I mean, and the, and the few times that I called them out on it, it just never ended well. And so now I just don't bother because they're just not going to change. And the thing is, is that you and your wife have a situation with your kids and everything. You are in a good place and you are both happy with how it's progressing and you're okay with how it's progressing. And so it isn't, it isn't up to me or anyone else to step in and try to tell you that you're living your life wrong. I will say my wife is also very, very excited as well. Like she is legitimately super excited. Uh, she, she, those are exact words she used at one point. Well, so, that's good. We're drinking the Kool Aid together. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. It, it doesn't have to be you drinking Kool Aid. It could. It, this could very well be an amazing opportunity for you. And and like I said, I, I, Anthony, and I, I think we're we're very honest. You know, it's like we 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 would rather be wrong than be right. You know, I mean, it's just. It's I'm just, just excited to see how it plays out. It's going to be a great story no matter what. Like, I just love having a story. Like, right. this is one, of, this is going to be one I got to wind up on. For, Forrest, this is the, the, the one thing I'm going, to, I'm going to say to you. See this excitement level you have right now? Yes. Okay. Don't lose this excitement level. That's going to be hard. But, but my point is, don't use that excitement level on this. What 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 was what's the thing you keep repeating every time we talk about this? That you want you want to elevate what? Bowers Game Corner. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's your focus. Yes. Your focus should be that, regardless of what what happens with this thing. Yes. Okay. So take the excitement you have, and focus it on Bowers Game Corner. Period. Yeah. And not so much on this. 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 It best 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 case scenario, it works out exactly like you think it's gonna happen. The well, second best case scenario is you get some some extra work thrown your way from this. Even if it's not 30 hours. Okay? But you take that that energy and that excitement you have and you focus it on Bowers Game Corner itself. Not that Hearst is going to throw all this work your way. It's going out and get and, and and busting your ass to go make those connections yourself. That's that's what I'm doing, man. That's I'm like, saying that's what you got to make sure you keep doing. Let's go to Japan that I was talking up earlier. I'm hopeful. I got a I got a solo gameplay video that I'm going to shoot to turn into a review. Like I'm going to start covering like actual hot games. Uh, like that's a plan. Mm -hmm. To get back into that biz, because you know, wait, I, wait, 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 who's I got gonna, the credibility. Who's, who's gonna Who's gonna do the how to play Monopoly <laughs> Monopoly yeah. video from eighteen fifty two? No, no, those are going back on the menu. Those are damn sure going back on the menu. I just was looking at some of my numbers because I pretty much you know dropped the ball for the last few months, except for Kickstarter critiques, because I was just doing so much work as like a sales associate that uh, the only thing that's still chugging along is is how to play those mass markets. Those are the, uh, those are the big ones. Those are retirement money right or there. Oh, Forest. Not giving those up. Forest. Yeah. Forest. Okay. Let's go back. Yeah. Let's go back to what we're discussing here for a minute. Sorry. Okay. Now, now, with with this, with getting these things from Hearst to do, does what you get paid depend on how many views you get? No. It's okay. Hourly rate. It's okay. Hourly rate. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, this is my point. Okay. This 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 is this is this is guaranteed money. Whatever it is. Yeah. Okay, it's guaranteed. You can say, I'm going to work this many hours on this, and I'm going to get paid this much money. Okay? And again, uh -huh. doing stuff that you're not getting paid for is perfectly fine. But those are extent. all, I don't know what I'm going to get, because I don't know how many views it's going to get. So, again, work on the things that are guaranteed money. Yeah. Work on building that. Don't work on the. I'm doing the Monopoly video because it'll get, you know, forty thousand views because it's a Monopoly. How to play Monopoly video and people will watch it for the irony of it. No, it's no, it's not that. Like those are those are people. I think you're you're dis discrediting the mass market there, man. Those are videos that people legitimately use. You know, there's a new Uno that comes out with a special rule. People want to know yeah. what that rule booklet is. 
And I actually ever... agree with Forrest on this, Renee. Yeah, to yeah. An extent. No, I, I not to it. mention, it's also not difficult for me because I get to play games with my kids, which means, boom, I got a gameplay I'm, video. I'm not and saying, I know that, how to teach saying you can't do that. But my point is, if you want to build Bowers Game Corner, you have to balance the two. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> okay. And get a real camera. That's... Yes. Oh, oh no. This, let me step in. Let me step in. The camera is fine. I don't got an issue. No, 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 let me let me step in. Let me step in. Oh, Ahoy there. This is a professional <laughs> setup there. So, yeah. Let me, let me, let me whitewash in. everything. Okay, let me let me let me just step in here real quick for us. Okay. <laughs> Say I'm Joe Schmo with Joe Schmo Publishing. Hey, I'm Joe Schmo. Okay, I'm 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 Joe. Hey, Joe. I'm Joe at Joe Low, Low Publishing, and I've got best board game ever. I'm going to head to Kickstarter with this, and and you know what? Hero Time, you're absolutely right. I think you're going to make my game for me, and I'm excited <laughs> to have you make that game. What's that you say? You have somebody to do some videos for me. Well, I've heard the Kickstarter videos are an important part. I mean, as a matter of fact, I've been watching some Kickstarter videos, watching them game found. I've seen some really good videos from like the Dice Tower. I've seen some really cool videos from Man vs. Meeple. Man, I mean, those things are slick as hell. What do you got for me? Bowers Game Club. <laughs> Never heard of it. I'll go check. Yeah, he's got he's got like 20k. He's got a bunch of subscribers. Really? I'll go check it out. Boy <laughs> there. What exactly is Bowers Game Quarter anyway? Uh can you give me Mark Streed's email? Maybe I wanna go that route instead. You so gotta up your game. You got <laughs> Mr. I don't wanna have to edit. That doesn't cut it anymore. This 43 <laughs> minute how to put no, I did editing. Oh baby, I'm putting up a video right now where I did editing. I did slow motion. I even zoomed in on my face. Like I, I crushed it. Well, that's like, fine, I, but then keep that up and keep doing it. Well that's and then, the and then you gotta make sure well well, yeah. Uh -huh. and you, well, go out go on to your fiber and find somebody who'll make a a better introduction video for your Whoa. channel. Oh, bridge too far. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to go there. You could talk to me, man. I I could do animation. I could help you. I'm always I here. You kinda, up, man. I kind of love Luca, <laughs> You gotta make you gotta make a a, a sheet, a menu, <laughs> a menu. Yeah. <laughs> and then throw go through hero time. <laughs> oh man, I. Can't wait to see how this plays out. I, I I do. I'm so excited. I also I actually one more thing I'm super excited about uh, that I'm going to talk to my aunt. My aunt has a pull behind camper that I'm going to see if I could like rent out for her because hopefully one service I'm going to be able to offer is, is a camper. Bring what? the video to you. So I got a big old F-150 truck that has, you know, like 47,000 miles. And if you're within, say, you know, three, four, five, six, eight hours, what, what number of driving? Three, four, five, six, what, eight? I don't know exactly the number of hours, but within a reasonable time where I could go, I could learn the rules, I could pull it off, hopefully within, you know, like an 18-hour span. And <laughs> hey, uh, what are you going to charge for this? I'm, I'm this, curious. We that's, a truck that's, that's going to go 12 <laughs> miles in an hour. That's the one that I have to look into. Undoubtedly, that's going to be the big thing. It's going to be a very expensive service, but it's still a cool <laughs> service nonetheless. Why like do you a, need the camper? Uh, because that's where I can shoot the videos. I'll, I'll physically take your prototype from you. You could, we could do it like you know what, whatever you, you want. To do. You don't think this these people would these people would have a would have a room in their house? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I okay, mean, fair point. I, fair point. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. Fair <laughs> point. But also, I'm. We may shoot in their house, and then I may want to spend the night, and that would be odd if that was a part of the service where I spent the night. And so, this is going to make it cheaper. Oh, but being in their driveway to campers, not. I could go. I could go find the nearest Walmart. You know, I'm, why, I'm, why, I'm, why? Why? Why can't they just ship you the game? Like, well, why, what if why, it's like a rush thing? It's like we need this done next week. So essentially, I would say, like, I'd say, hey, dear, I got this thing next week. We make, you know. I don't know what the cost would be. Hundreds said, of dollars. That's great. My, my 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 boyfriend will love the fact that you're out of town. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing that, that I was also going to do was take my kids with me and we could find like a campground or something nearby. So then after mm -hmm. dad works and does the video, which they could also potentially help with because they love playing board games, then we go camping. I'm going to say right now, nobody on earth wants your kid in their thing. <laughs> 
I'm just going to tell you that right now. Uh, if we have a family game, why would you not want a gameplay video of a family play? Riddle me that, Batman. Hey, Lance, you've seen that thing you do, right? That's a great movie. When they yes. meet their manager and he's got the camper on the back of his truck? Yes. <laughs> It'll be Fars. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want some beans? I love the idea. <laughs> I love the idea. People say I'm copying Richard. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Richard's living it up right now in that camper. That's got to be That's the dream right there. You want some beanie weenie? Mm-hmm. Fars, my- do you have a... I'll be honest, Jed. I didn't, I didn't watch like your recent stuff. Do you do you oh. have a, um, uh, uh, like a, a set? Like a you're looking I'll, at. I'll, it. I'm looking at the notebook. <laughs> the so maybe oh. instead. Of, so instead of putting money on the trailer, try to maybe get put the money on your on a set, a nice set. Well, you know, I don't. I don't elevate. have to put money on the the trailer. Like that's like I'll pay. Like I'm gonna get paid to do the service. And then I'm just going to be like, hey, kid, you're right. I'll give you a hundred bucks. Can I borrow this for the weekend kind of thing? And it helps out my aunt who's, you know, she's not at the best money wise as well. So she's going to get paid off of it. And then I'm going to get paid off of it. And they're going to get the video and I'm going to work hours and hopefully get a family trip out of it. Like I'm super like, if, cause if anybody takes that, like, it's like an exciting thing to me. I feel like, I don't know. And, and it might turn out terrible. And then it'll be an awesome story. It'll be like, oh, yeah, I tried that idea. It was effing terrible. Let me tell you. It, it, it will be. It won't work. And, and no. then it's I'll not have a good an idea. amazing story. You, and you should camp- ask Dan King about the camping videos. The camping <laughs> videos in the camper. I should have a special camper list because I've actually shot quite a few campers, uh, camper videos. Probably, probably close to 50 camper videos, I imagine. Because they were just regular videos. They just happened to shoot in the camper. Every once in a while, you'd have to pause because the train would roll by. <laughs> you, you are, <laughs> you're something else, Forrest. Hey. Yeah, something else. Uh, something else. Something else else, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I got to say something to Luca before I forget. Uh-huh. So, Luca, when I watch the video, the, for the, Tau Wars. That that's your wife, right? Who narrated it? Yeah. I I thought it was Felicia for a minute. No. Right. <laughs> when I first heard it, I was like, oh, they got Felicia to do the the, the voiceover. And yeah. Then I I got, saw, and then I, I saw your your thing on Facebook that said, uh, I want to thank my wife for doing the voiceover. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a truly independent game. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. She's embarrassed. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of in, a lot of in-house things have been made. <laughs> mm. Basically everything, even the artwork. The artwork is my uh, is my uh, my cousin-in-law, and she she was well when she sketched it. It was she was only sixteen, so oh, really? yeah. And and then well, we got another professional artist to take those sketches and. Basically, That's they cool. were concept yeah. art for the artist. So yeah, a lot of like family people were involved in the project, which is fun. It's nice, you know. I don't have the uh, the uh, the the funding of big big companies, <laughs> unfortunately. You don't have the funding of big cardboard. <laughs> no. mm. <laughs> Big cardboard, baby. Big cardboard. Asmo day and Asmo day. Oh man, Asmo day. <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, Asmo day. I think a rep at Asmo day saw my game at uh, Essen, and they're like, "You're never gonna make this. It's gonna be like impossible to make. Your towers are gonna be too expensive," and which is weird because usually they they would know like. How much it would cost to make a game like this because it's not there's not that many components so it's not that expensive it's the, the towers are the most expensive if i take out the towers it's like a five dollar game you know so i don't know it's, it, in a way when they told me that when asma day told me that i was like oh man i so want to prove you wrong like no. me against the big guy you know uh you know you charge a little more if you want to do that <laughs> you'll show him right you'll yeah, show i'll show him when i fund <laughs> yeah 
Titan. You will, uh... Oh, sorry, Pop. Oh, I'm sorry. Then Forrest could come out with his camper oh. and film a video. <laughs> but yeah, he'll just come out with his camper and you'll come, be... Come up to Quebec. No. Come to Quebec, man. <laughs> Who knows? I don't. Yeah, how, I don't even know how far he is. He, he probably is eight eight hours away. Indiana, to, yeah, probably eight ten. <laughs> yeah. Same as going to what you call it. Same as going to Gen Con. Okay, so yeah, though it's about twelve hours. It's long. I can see Forrest trying to get through customs. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen me. You should have seen me after Gen Con going through customs with my truck full. Full, full to the brim of review copies. Yeah. Like, the, we were, we will always be pulled over. Like, like, what the hell do you have in your truck? You know, like that's weighing it so much. And the guy would open it, and we'd see all these board games, and we're like, oh, they're just samples, you know, not, nothing of value. They're like two dollars each. <laughs> they're <laughs> prototypes. We'd come up with all kinds of things. We didn't have a choice. But it's like. We- would you have to claim something if you were going from the states up? Yeah, because we wouldn't we wouldn't stay that uh, we wouldn't stay that long, right? We'd just go for the weekend. If you have seven days in the states, then you could come back with a lot of stuff. But we only went for maybe four days, like four nights or whatever. Okay, so, so we do the duty thing. Me, yeah, and they wanted to see receipts, but we had to explain that we didn't buy these; they're given to us. Like it was just, yeah, it was it was. It was fun. Good times. It was like good time at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you have my brother screaming uh, and stuff, it's, it's yeah. entertaining. <laughs> well, I think when you go from one country to another, regardless of who they are, it should be easy, <laughs> you know. Oh, whether no, they are not. catted or not, you know. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of designed to be not easy. Yeah, <laughs> I should hope so. I think they were just curious, like, what are all these colorful boxes in this truck? Yeah, yeah. I know when we were in, when I was at the BGG Spring last year, um, I was out smoking a cigarette, and the the cops came by, and they were going in the restaurant to eat lunch or whatever. And when he came out, he asked me what's going on. He's like, it's a board game convention, and I took them down to show them the main floor. It on, they were amazed. They called like their their rest of the crew and all, and throughout the day they would come in and out. The rest of the airport cops and all. <laughs> Just when people see that, <laughs> it's 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 amazing to me. You know, I enjoy that the look on their face. <laughs> I can see that. That'd be. They're mostly thinking you're a bunch of nerds. No, nah, they were getting into it. They were like watching people play and all that, asking them questions. Yeah. It was I'm surprised I'm, I'm surprised at my store sometimes like I still get people that walk in and they look at the wall and they're like, What are you selling? What is that? <laughs> like <laughs> it's so weird that still people don't know what a board game is. Like it's crazy. Well, we do we do kind of live in a little bit of a niche hobby. So I mean it's still niche. I mean, people yeah. can get excited about the fact that oh, oh, you know, it was on that they they had the board games on that one TV show that everybody watches, and yeah, it's still pretty niche, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, and a lot of that stuff is in the background. It's there for yeah. us to go. Oh, look, cool. Yeah, yeah, Easter eggs, and it's it's always it's always Rio Grande who has it. <laughs> hey. We can't, we can't like just poo poo it though. Like to say that we haven't grown in leaps and bounds in the last 10 years, five years, even like it's crazy, just crazy how much more known board games are. But even the, even the, yeah, even the hobby scene, like I can see it here in Montreal. We used to have two stores, and, and now I can't even keep up with how many stores sell board games and cards and run tournaments and stuff like that. It's, really? it, it, it has exploded big time, yeah. Hmm. We still only got the one here. Uh, I'm in a smaller town, too. College town. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, we should I go back to that... the good old days where we were beaten up outside of the library by the tough kids. And... <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell would touch you, Lance? <laughs> mm. uh, when I was younger, I didn't... I didn't, I didn't uh... Lance was very dorky looking when he was younger. I've seen pictures. Yeah, I was young, <laughs> but I, and, and I didn't really fill out till I was in the eighth or ninth grade, and then, but then it was like, yeah. And after that, they 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 sought they sought easier prey. 
after that. Mm -hmm. So Lance was just the big dorky kid back then. He <laughs> grew the beard and get and get all scary looking until yeah. he opens his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There was there was a guy I used to work with. I worked with this uh, sporting goods store, and uh, this guy Reggie started working there. Uh, Reggie's African American. He's about six five, three hundred pounds, big, huge, bulking man. And go on. Reggie was very intimidating looking. But that was as far as it got with Reggie, as far as being intimidating. Teddy Bear. Yeah. So we every year we do, you know, in January, end of January, we do inventory. So basically, you just count everything that's in the warehouse, everything that's in the stock rooms, everything that's on the floor. So they close the store early, and we work to like whenever it gets done. And then one of the guys who was the assistant manager, his brother owned the bar that we used to hang out with. So we used to always go to the bar after we were done. And like it was the one time like everyone in the store would go. So we're like, Reggie, you want to come to the bar with us? And he goes to me and he goes, Is it cool? Because again, he was the only like there were two guys African American in the store. And I said, Reggie, it's cool. I said, but if you <laughs> feel intimidated, just don't talk to anybody. <laughs> and he's like, Why? I said, Reggie. His guy was raised by his southern grandma like church on sunday very yeah. very like soft spoken quiet mm -hmm. sweet like he wouldn't hurt a fly and i said just don't open your mouth i said because you're scary looking you're because you're just huge you're a big <laughs> huge guy i said but as soon as you start talking and everyone realizes you are just a big teddy bear that's mm -hmm. when your intimidation goes away <laughs> And it's not like it's it's like he's like soft spoken or whatever. And like if he had to, like if you picked a fight with Reggie, Reggie is not fighting back. That's not how Reggie was raised. It's not Reggie's personality. And I was like, just just keep your mouth shut. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And I said, but everyone there is cool. You walk in with us. Everyone's it's gonna be cool. Don't worry about it. I said you're a foot taller than everybody else too, so don't worry. Mm -hmm. But. Don't talk, man. Just don't yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. But like that that's Lance. Lance is very intimidating looking until he opens his mouth and you talk to him, he's like, Oh, he's a big teddy bear. Yeah. Put him next to a hundred and then, mm -hmm. yeah. then, then you're getting a very worded letter. Yeah, cold. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was very kind in my letter. Yes, my wife, sir. My, my wife did kind. say that. If you're going to send them a letter, make sure you're not a dick about it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not be a dick. I'm just gonna talk to him. Just gonna talk to him. Oh, so wait. So you're gonna being a dick to people. Um. So my, my the update on the uh, scam calls I get is now I answer the phone. I go hello, and when I hear the boop, when they say hello, I'm like, "Hi, this is Mike calling from American Solar." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Or all that, or if if it, it, it's a person's voice who. It is not one of those guys that I keep getting from them. It's someone calling about my Medicare benefits, which I don't have. They don't know that. So I'll, I'll say hi. Yeah. This is Tom. I'm calling to see if you want to upgrade your Medicare benefits. That's amazing. And they're like, uh, hello? It must be so good for you. So funny. Okay. They just annoy me. Like the other day, a dude came. He was a roofer, but I I opened the door. I seen the the badge on no, his no, shirt. No, no, no. Like, he was a roofer. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. He said, "I'm not selling anything." I'm like, "I'm not interested." It's like I'm just trying to give you a free estimate on the roof. I was like, "That's trying to sell me something." I'm not interested. Go away. How many fucking times do I have to say this before I grab my shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> so what is that? Is it three, two, what? How many times I'm, do you say? Mary, no? Do you <laughs> have a no soliciting sign? I feel like yes, there be... actually is one. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's window. a different story, though. Right below the fire department, that's, there's that's two cats the in the house. Coming to the house. <laughs> Jen made him put it up. Yeah, that's <laughs> super annoying if they don't respect the sign. Like, that should be just, like, the symbol, like, okay, like, duh. <laughs> yeah. It's like when I see a no trespassing sign in someone's yard, and I'm like, I the houses that you don't effing <laughs> ever break that rule, Okay. <laughs> 
a business yep. versus houses like that or no trespassing signs are very different things to cross. Yeah. You know, I don't go that deep into it, but it's like, no. I, I remember in uh, in Florida, I, I, we were driving and I had to make a U-turn, but the road was really tight. So I used someone's driveway to do a U-turn because in Canada, we're, we do that. It's fine. <laughs> mm. But in Florida, like as soon as we turned into the to the into the the driveway to do the U turn, the guy came out with the shotgun. Jesus, like, get oh my off God. my lawn! Get off my lawn! And we're like, holy shit! <laughs> Florida is a different country, though. Oh I mean. man, <laughs> that's fucking it's scary. That is scary. That is scary. Like we're doing a U turn, man. Like, uh, yeah, they don't like. Even like in Jersey and the Pine Barrens and all that, they don't really like when you pull up in their driveway. Right. Yeah, I, I I feel like they it's like they want an excuse. It's like they're at their they're at their porch waiting for an excuse. You know, like is that guy gonna go in my driveway? Like, he was out like so fast, it was crazy, ready to shoot. Like, bet he had a shotgun by the door. Yeah, just ready, man. Like, crazy. Well, you never know, you know. Yeah. I mean, you got to hope, but you never know. Mm-hmm. Crazy mm-hmm. Italian Canadians, and if you don't yeah. have kids, you know, if you don't have kids, it's one thing. Mm-hmm. Great. If someone does break into your house, the first thing they get to grab is a shotgun. That's that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's like that's got to be like a wow. Like, what what do you think as like a robber when you grab that? Like, what would what would run through your head? Is that I feel like I, I don't even know. I feel like, all right, I just got a shotgun. I'm out. Cool. Like, I, I'm not going any deeper. I'd be happy with this small gate and go to a different house that does not have a loaded shotgun, presumably, at the door. Uh, I don't know. Like, what What? Like, what do you guys think? And, and just try and put yourself in I a never robbed the house, so I will. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's difficult. <laughs> so it's difficult. Forrest, I, I grew up in the Bronx. Uh-huh. And oh, well, they, they used to be a thing you could buy. Jenny from the Block? You could buy or you could make that was called a home invasion shotgun. The shot off. <laughs> no, it's not actually even a gun. Oh, it just looks like one? Nope. Oh. It just sounds like you're cocking a shotgun. The click, yeah, the pump. Oh. Pump of a shotgun, the yeah. sound, that's all it did was make that sound. And in the dark, that is the scariest thing you'll ever hear. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. That's one way to make them. Yeah, they were they were yeah. old guys in the neighborhood who would teach you how to make one as soon as you bought a house. They come to your house. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a shotgun? No. Do you, Do you want a, a home invasion shotgun? <laughs> like, what is that? And they would teach you how to make one. That's brilliant. Smart. That's yeah. That's brilliant. And it's like it's like like what is it supposed to do? I'm like someone's in your house and it's dark. You just go to the top of the steps and says, "Who say somebody down there?" And sh- sh- uh, and you'll hear them run out the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, what if what if what if they say, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> They're usually gonna have to break it in a oh, house with a gun back, this long, Lance. Back, back, <laughs> I mean, back in the eighties, and you know, people broke into houses without uh, weapons. Yeah, yeah, it's a totally different world now. <laughs> the good old days. The good old days. <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, and then, of course, I had uh, <laughs> cousin who was a cop, who would always say, "If you have a gun, and someone breaks in your house and you shoot them." Pull them in the house. <laughs> Throw them through the front window. <laughs> Why? Because if someone is is fleeing your house and you shoot them, <laughs> you you are you can you can get in trouble. Yeah. But if they're coming into your house, it's a different story. Different story. <laughs> oh, so you have to throw them through the window inside the house. Yes, they were inside my house. They broke through my front oh, window and I, and I shot them. You got to make it look like they broke in. <laughs> oh my god. Crazy. Although I think that is different state to state with the self defense store. It, it's in most in Florida's like Florida's the only state where you can shoot someone in the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty old, much. Yeah, good old Florida. <laughs> I knew we could count on you. Yeah, got to make sure they're looking at you. But yeah, if someone is, if someone is leaving your house, 
they're not a threat to you. That's the reason why you, when you, you know, the, the yeah. shooting someone is if they're a threat to you, then that's self-defense. If they are running away with your TV, yes, they have your TV, but they're not no longer a threat to you. But it's my TV. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. uh, the good old days. The good old days. <laughs> it was we weren't as trigger happy back in the day, <laughs> you know. It's it's a little different today. Unfortunately, I don't even think we're all that trigger happy now either. I mean, it's it's uh, there's, there's more weapons. I will no. I, will I agree think we are percent that we are, but I mean, we have way more kids dying today than it. No, we are way more trigger happy with the younger. No, it's 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 a it's a whole different thing. Everything is different. We've talked about this on here. Oh, I got into an argument with some turd just the other day. That they, they, just he was like he was relating some story about how when he was a kid, when he was like eight or nine, he said that uh, he. Uh, some of you might be friends with this turd uh, on on Facebook because he's kind of made the round. But anyway, he said that like when he saw his mom teaching his sisters how to put makeup on. He said, he's like, I want to try that out. And so, and his mother said, no, no. It's, it's, and he's like, no, I want to try. And so she like <laughs> said, did, did him up with makeup. And then when he was eight or nine and she showed him in the mirror and then he thought he looked, I thought he said, I thought I looked ridiculous. And we all laughed and, and she washed, she's like, we better wash you up before your dad gets home kind of thing. And so she washed him. And then he went on to say, he's like, now if that had happened today, he said, my parents would have gotten me into hormone therapy and they would have gotten this, that, and the other thing. And they would have immediately decided that I wanted to be a woman and all stuff. And every, and, and like, of course he had his like five or six turds that like, you know, Oh yeah, the world's just a different place now. Just, you know, and like all these people, you know, and I apologize. I mean, chopping off their, mm, and now they're going to wonder where it is later. And, and it was just like, and then the right mind of people are like, no, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. It's like that doesn't happen, and then they were like, "Nope, it's a it's a billion dollar corporation now, just preying upon parents that are worried about their kids and getting them on hormones early and all stuff." No, I it was like maybe in some extreme cases those things have happened, but for the absolute, it absolutely is not happening. You it, like they're like if you actually do any research into whatsoever, and I was like trying to reason with them, and I finally just I I, I finally laid out my trump card, which is always like. I was like, do you realize how stupid you sound? Do you realize how <laughs> absolutely stupid you sound? I said, I said, you have no hard facts behind anything that you're saying other than what you feel, which is fine. You can feel however you want, but whether you, but what you feel is stupid. I said, because, <laughs> because there is there is anecdotal evidence supporting your claims. And but I said, but what you know what's real? I said, is that is that you know. The thousands upon thousands of cases of trans people being assaulted, murdered, abused, bullied, driven to suicide by shitty attitudes like this. And that is documented proof. I said, I said, look, go back. And I was like, and I, and I, I went, I showed him a picture. I showed him a picture of the black girl walking into a school while, while racist dickheads under armed, under police guard, while racist shitheads scream at her for having the ball like for be having a a, a non-segregated school i was like we look at these people today and we say they're fucking morons like, we we can't believe how fucking stupid people were back when like in the 60s in the 50s when racism was just allowed to exist i said we look back at that that's how people are gonna think of you and they, they, they're, they're gonna think i can't believe how fucking stupid you are in in we'll see no, you won't, because you'll be dead. <laughs> and, and and your and your grandchildren are gonna like find this post on the internet and they're gonna say, What a fucked up piece of shit our great grandpa was. <laughs> it's like that's yeah. what's going to happen. Yep. I was like My grandfather was an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know, I was like, you know, I, I had the grandma that dropped the N-word every once in a while, and we and then like and you know, I was just like and and, and we are all like and we all put up with it. Because we didn't have the guts to tell our nine-year-old grandma to say, "Grandma, you can't say that," you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. and it's just 
But no, I mean, fuck those people. I hate those fucking people. I, I just, I, I don't hate anybody. But I mean, I hate, I hate fucking people that are just like, look, the world has moved on. The world moved on without you and you don't like it anymore. Tough shit. Tough shit. I, I, I just, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Die. Die and have your outdated piece of shit, hateful attitudes buried with you. Oh my just, God. Viking. So does your sensitive uh, to your Because, <laughs> because, because uh, that that. Where the hell did this come up. from? We were talking about guns. No, no, no. I've been chewing on this for a oh, while. We can tell. And I was, just, tell. I was just, but I mean, you can't tell those people anything. You can't. I don't tell them think anything. I'm friends with this person. Thank God. Yeah. Was, was that when you made that post where you're like, man, I have jerks on my face? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Just like. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was like, like why? Why funny. do I unfollow you for thirty days? Why do I do that? Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> Boy, the snow just, you know, just There's thirty days. I, no, it isn't thirty days. It's gone. See you right. later, pal. I just no, because I mean, because you know, and whatever. And they're just like, no, there you are. Go woke. Go broke. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> fuck, fuck you. It has nothing to do with that. And it's just like it's 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 just you oh know. I will, I will fully agree. And I was like, I still, I, I, I know in my heart that like, I, well, I just had a discussion with my wife about something that we discussed. And I said, I find it hard to actually completely buy into this thing. That's very progressive. And I just, because I have, I have these feelings that aren't as progressive as that. And I was like, and then she was like kind of reprimanding you for it. And she's like, you realize what that sounds like? And I was like, I know, but that's how I feel. And I mean, so like, I know I'm not completely, but I'm also just in this attitude of like, you know, you know, fucking when I it, when I went to high school, the one kid who had the balls to be openly gay in my high school got the shit kicked out of him every single day. And to, you know, I mean, it was just like, and nobody did anything. And I till this day, I'm mad at myself that I mean that like basically the idea was that like, oh my god, you know, just like there goes that kid, you know, you know, and he's getting messed with again. You know, his life is just, you know, and I look at him now and he's, he's a, he's like a fucking lawyer. He's got a YouTube channel with like, you know, hundreds of thousands of views and just, he looks like he's just doing amazing and good for you. I'm glad. And all those little pieces of shit you didn't know any better. You know, none of them would ever think back and go, oh man, maybe I shouldn't have been a dick. No, they just moved on with their lives. They don't care. Well, whatever. Who cares? Maybe the and universe probably got still a dick in most of them. Yeah. And maybe, but you just kind of hope that the universe fucking, uh, you, you, the whole, you just hope the universe like kind of caught up with those people a little bit. But I mean, but I mean, it's something like that where it's just like, you know, the idea that you'd say, yeah, two, two men or two women can get married. Like if you said that in the 80s, people would say, get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. What happens then? I'm going to marry my fucking cow. I'm going to marry a fucking horse. I'm going to marry this chair. It's a slippery slope. And now if we look at back, if we look back at those arguments now, we'd be like, you fucking moron. You fucking backwards hit. You just like, what? Yeah. I think it's funny because I'm drinking out of my Love is Universal mug. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I just I just just take your shitty fucking you know, all these fucking people that are like and also just like you know what I mean? And to a lesser extent that's not the way D&D &D should be played. Fuck you. Just shut up. Just go play D&D &D <laughs> the way you want to. The millions <laughs> of people my my, my my fucking my, my one of my one of my really good friends who owns a owns a board game and comic book store and D and D store in town, uh, Rich. He said he was like, yeah, he's like people are like people that people that come in and and say shit like, oh, you know, it's like you buy that woke shit. He's like, he's like, yeah, sixty dollars a book, and I and I sell three hundred a month. So you know, it's just like they don't play what you want to play. They don't care about you. They just what. I don't. D and D should be played with graph paper and dice. You have to color in with a crayon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> did you see? Did, did, in a lighter note, did you see the really fucking cool dice that Luke Gygax is selling at Gary Con? This, this, they go uh, go look at them. They they look fucking out of this world. They are like completely and totally old school polyhedral. The shit we got when we bought our basic sets back in the day. They look fucking amazing. The stuff that looked kind of not correctly shaped that it actually was. Yeah, but like, 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 but a, like, a like Starburst. <laughs> like two, <laughs> and you get you get two twenty sided. Um, uh, 
you no, actually, I'm sorry, you get three 20 sided. You get a real 20 sided, and then you get two 20 sided that um one is uh is uh one through uh zero through nine twice and the other is zero zero through ninety twice so you have polyhedral dice that are 20 sided they look fucking amazing and you get a crayon to fill in the numbers <laughs> nice crayons the best Crayons are the best, man. On Instagram, I've been seeing like some crazy, crazy dice, like dice that look like potions that have actual liquid in them and stuff. It's so insane. What? Oh, uh, yeah, there's like they the roll and they land on five. Is that, is that is that is <laughs> that your is that your uh, lovely wife we hear in the background? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> did, did, no. Did, did, did she hear my rant and she called that guy an asshole? I think I heard her say that that guy is an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Good, I good for her. She loved the rant. <laughs> we mm -hmm. all, I think we all did. <laughs> let it out. Let it yeah, out. Yeah, if I don't. Are way too, I think people are way too concerned with what other people do. Like, just let people live. I don't know. Think live and let die. Live and let die. Live and let live. Oh, live hopefully, they die. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, um, no, I try not to get too angry about stuff, but it's really too easy now. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> I tried not to get angry. <laughs> you just went on a 20 minute rant. <laughs> right, so I, I played this recently. What'd you uh, say, what you say, Lord of the Rings? Oh, the adventure played... ones? How, uh, how'd you like it? Yeah. It, it was... Oh my God, the Nazgul. It was, it was okay. The Nazgul. It was like, a, like a, you're, you're doing a path and you're trying to get to like Mount Doom and stuff. Probably Nazgul. But there's like, yeah, so I So it's the Nazgul, wife. I hear. Yeah. She, yes, we get on camera. So so she's she's like the Lord of the Rings fanatic, right? Like three times. And every time the Nazgul killed us, like there were too many. Yeah, the Nazguls were just too hard. It's a cooperative game. Too hard. And like the story didn't make sense. You were mad that some things weren't making sense. Yeah. Like some some yeah. of the bad guys would show up that weren't supposed to show up at before you that get time. to a certain yeah, and like, yeah. So, so if you're a fan, when you see weird story like that Harry Potter game, uh, what was it, the battles? Oh yeah, and part four, Quirrell's there. He's supposed to be dead. Clover Rider, so yeah. So uh, she, she's very thematic. If you're playing a game with, <laughs> game, why? Like, there are thousands of bad guys. Quirrell's a piece of shit. He's dead in book one. Get it over with. So <laughs> she's passionate. Yeah. Don't really started on the Harry Potter game. Yeah, Harry Potter game, Lord of the Rings. She started playing Magic because of the Lord of the Rings magic. So that's that's how much she loves Lord of the Rings. Yeah, getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Um, well, I'm glad. I'm glad that she's she's passionate. Yep. About the things and the stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you know, when you were telling that burrito story, I, I thought you were going towards like table flipping it, like taking a bite, seeing that it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, sometimes you had a burrito, if, if I'm any, that should be illegal. <laughs> cold burrito should be illegal. If if I'm with if I'm with my wife, she gets very embarrassed when I complain about things. So, and that's fine. She she can. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to shame her in any way. I mean, that's she. They, it causes her anxiety, and she starts to feel uncomfortable if I'm like, even if I'm right, even if I'm right, you know, like she's she, doesn't, always, she doesn't want you to. She doesn't want you to, Karen. She's she's very much like just just let it go, just let it go. I'm like, but I'm right, damn it. You know, just like... Can I just say you can totally complain about a cold burrito? That's really upsetting. She's upset well, at the cold burrito. That's yeah, that's reason for complaint. Yeah. I would say she's also like uh, like she's also like a cook and she's working on a uh, uh, a cookbook and everything. That's we're probably gonna put on cake. cookbook or not. Nobody wants to eat a cold burrito. That's disgusting. No, I know, but I mean, you're a foodie, kind of. So. Yeah. <laughs> she hears cold burrito. Ew. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. it was, it was, it was, yeah, it wasn't great. Like I said, I'm more, annoyed that, I'm more annoyed that they haven't gotten back to me. I'm like, at this point, they should have gotten back yeah, to me. They should, they should he, have. He, he wrote them a well-polite 
word there of was letter. Very was, it, was, it a breakfast, was it a breakfast burrito? Yes, it was a breakfast burrito. Okay, see, I just went to a restaurant Saturday and they brought, I had, uh, I ordered a sunny side up eggs and my toast took 25 minutes to get there. And I'm not going to eat sunny side up eggs with no bread. So I basically didn't have breakfast. 25 minutes for toast. Like, what's that about? We all have a restaurant. No, no the cold <laughs> eggs should be, like, why? It's a, that's all they serve. They only serve eggs. How hard is it to bread with the damn toast? With bread with the eggs, like it's not. Well, you'd be surprised. Some people don't get served at all. But it was <laughs> for thirty minutes. Go in there and go in the kitchen and kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, you have, you have to call to get served. Somebody... It's like, yeah, I'm in your restaurant. Can you serve me? Oh yeah, I heard that part. But yes. I mean, like, my meal was eggs, potatoes, and bacon. If you forget the toast, I don't eat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Write him a nice letter. <laughs> I wrote them a very nice letter. I'd never hear from him again. They probably they didn't just, see it. Nah, I, I might have to write him again. I might have to. Yeah, like I said, I just should have complained while I was there, and I did, and I didn't. And I this will be Lance's mission for months. Once a week, I'll be writing a letter to these people. <laughs> but I want well, justice. I demand satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you always like, go on Google and feel like, you know, I, 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 I think, I, I think it's funny that Lance keeps asking me to if I want to move to Minnesota. Can you imagine <laughs> me in Minnesota? <laughs> Minnesota, I think, not, I think, not part of my vocabulary. <laughs> I think you would enjoy it here very much. I do not see Anthony being Minnesota nice. <laughs> I would I would become so instantly famous in your town. <laughs> oh my god, it's that New York Italian guy. Famous or infamous? <laughs> <laughs> He's so angry. <clears throat> There's no pleasing him. <clears throat> no, it was fine. It was fine. Everybody's, Everybody's fine. doing their best. Everybody's doing their best. Let's try. It's a good. It's a good try, everyone. Let's try it again next week. It's good enough. <laughs> we can try again next week. I think it'll work this time. No, I mean I don't know. It's uh, it's upsetting sometimes. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, it gets frustrating. And um, yeah, but well, whatever, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's <laughs> okay. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Is Jessica Italian? Nope. She speaks oh. better Italian than me, though. Okay. She's, she's a linguist. Italian adjacent. <laughs> Italian you know adjacent. By osmosis. Italian adjacent. Yeah. yeah. You're Italian? She's uh, she's Lebanese. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Fire, fire, fiery personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are indeed. Not, not <laughs> your brother, son. Oh yeah, my my brother. Well, he just. He's, oh, your he brother's everybody. A, your brother's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you. Speaking of your brother, let me ask you a question. So when you were younger. Was it like a big deal that your brother was a big time TV star in Canada? I don't, it didn't affect me in any way. No, I don't, I don't no, know. you never, you never pulled that. My brother's on that show. No, not really. Actually, like there was a girl that called my store. I think it was like in the afternoon from Australia. She's like, "Hi, is your is 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 Giancarlo working there? I'm a huge fan, and I'd like to talk to him." I'm like, no, it doesn't work today. He's like, oh, I see. she's like, I think she said, I stayed up till 4 a.m. to call you guys at, at in the afternoon <laughs> to talk to him. I'm like, that's pretty intense. Yeah. Like, uh. Yeah, it was pretty. Uh, we Then uh, he got recognized when we went to uh, well, my wedding in the Dominican Republic. We were in the pool and some guys came and they're like, aren't you that guy? And so then we had to like kind of, it was a small hotel, so we kind of had to always mingle with them after uh, that. Yeah, so. 
Uh, what's the what's age that? difference between these guys and Lucas? Sorry? What's the age difference between you guys? He's uh, 48. Uh, and I'm six 42, about six years. Okay. Yeah. I used to yeah, be... I guess you were too young for that. To remember, you know, really be affected by it. Yeah, no, I mean, they would use me as extras. Like, I'd, I'd be like a student walking by or whatever in school and stuff like that. It was fun. I mean, I maybe that's how I got into, like, wanting to do videos and stuff like that. Like, I was always looking at the cameraman and going yeah. behind the editing table and stuff like that. So it was fun being on set and stuff. Yeah. I, I've watched those shows on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I know you can find them. They're pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're pretty good. Apparently, like, he used to have the spiky hair there. And yes. <laughs> at one point, he had to throw an apple and make it land on the spike. And he said it took, like, half a day of takes of just him trying to get an apple to land on his really? spike. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, because I guess they didn't have CGI that was that yeah, good enough yeah. to do that, you know? So, yeah. That was cool. Jen just started watching that um, about the child actors at Nickelodeon. I forget the name of it. Didn't start oh. yet. No, it's out. There was two, two or three episodes. It, they must have just come out. I was looking for it the other day, and it's just coming soon still. Yeah, no, it's on uh, Netflix. Quiet what on the set. Name? That's it. Yeah, she started to watch too. I was like, I can't watch this. Shit. <laughs> I've been watching a ton of documentaries lately. I watched the Miss Cleo documentary, which was quite interesting. Miss Cleo? Oh, the uh, psychic? Psychic lady, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, was, she was not psychic. Well, what? Uh, <laughs> you're, you don't Netflix. say. Didn't you see all the commercials? Yeah, different Netflix. Yeah. She wasn't, she's not even Jamaican. Oh, yeah. There you go. Didn't nah, you see wasn't. the commercials? <laughs> that man's a toad. <laughs> but it was interesting because they, they explained, like, they had people on it and they who, like, knew her and everything, but they had like like Raven Simone was one of the people who was on it, and uh, I forgot the actress's name. But she used to be on Mad TV. She used to do Miss Cleo on Mad TV. Oh, uh, can't remember her name, but she's like yeah. all tattooed now and's got like the things in her ears. But they were talking about, it and a lot of things they were saying was the fact that why Miss Cleo was was so popular. It's because unlike the other psychic things you do, they would all tell you the best things, and she would just she would tell you straight something, like "Oh, that's because he's seeing somebody else." <laughs> like, "Oh, don't worry about it," and that's why she was so popular. But like the biggest thing about her was um, she was a huge uh, LGBTQ um, person. Advocate advocate so she like did all these rallies like even though after she was disgraced and everything and and whatever like they would call the rally and they were like she's like I, what do you need me to do i'll be there i'll help that's, that's cool but very interesting and then i watched the one on the uh the heaven's gate people oh yeah they were messed up people <laughs> kind of weird kind of interesting yeah uh, yeah <laughs> That was the one with the uh, silver lady. No, with, I'm no, thinking of another one. Even the people who were they drank the the Kool Aid because they were going to get beamed up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. They all had the same haircuts, the same short haircuts. Yeah, some of the men were castrated, and they had the Adidas running suits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus. I think we have we have a different Netflix in Canada. You like probably do. You guys are mentioning I I never I haven't seen or heard of. Yeah, those were on. Um, I think they were on Max. I watched them. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what makes people fall for a cult like that. I, I'm sure it's not at all at once. I'm sure it's gradual, but it's what it's where you are in your life and what they offer yeah. you and yeah. i guess if they do it little by little you don't even notice it yeah. 
And then I watched, oh, no, it's a good one. I watched the Patty Hearst one. Patty? Yeah. That one's really good. <laughs> Yeah, that was what that was the Lebanese army, wasn't it? That yeah. she went with the Sydney's. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what it was. Something army. Yeah, yeah. That family wasn't that the the um the uncle or something got his ear. He was kidnapped and got his ear cut off. Was that the same family? No. Who was that? Who was that one? I don't know. Getty. I'm sorry. That was Getty, not her. Getty. I know it was one of the big ones. Yeah, that was that was an interesting one with Patty Hearst. Very crazy. Yeah, like they talked to the people who were part of the the people who kidnapped her. They talked to one of the people mm -hmm. who was actually part of the kidnapping. Uh, and the best part of the whole, the best line of the whole thing is he goes, "Yeah, well, that's someone I realized." We kidnapped a psycho. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they ran up to your neck of the woods, didn't they? Up there in New York for something they were hiding out for a while. For a while they were hiding in like Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, yeah. Yeah, I knew they came over here from out west. Palmdale. Oh, shit. Well, I suppose... It's one eighteen. Where I am. It's two eighteen. Yeah, it's two yeah. I got a long day at work tomorrow. Um I got a convention. So. You got a convention? <laughs> yeah, it's a mini convention at the at a college, so it's just like a geek con they're calling it. I'm gonna go show my game and hopefully get a few pledges. We'll see Anthony, how it goes. You ever get your uh, tabletop simulator work? Um, I gave up on it that day. And I <laughs> <it back. laughs> All right. Uh, if you're up oh. at 10 o'clock, if you get it to work and you're up at 10 o'clock at night, I guess it'd be 11 for you and you want to play test a game. I'm doing a play test tomorrow. So, All right. I'll let you know. All right. Oh, look, it just popped up. The board game group. Battle of the Bags. Oh, it came through. Nice. <laughs> I like, what do you think of the thumbnail? I work. I worked on it. Vent security. <laughs> yeah, Forrest, if you need anything, let me know, man. If you need, like, editing or animation or anything like that, I, I could help you out. Okay. Cool, man. Yeah. I might do that. Cool. Oh, and if anybody needs translation in rule books or editing rule books, uh, my wife also does that. She's do you guys have fibers or anything like that? How do you guys... How do you guys... Shop yourselves around. What are fivers? A fiver. Oh god. <laughs> so fiver is pretty much just like a marketplace where people will go for services. So if you want to get some fancy art done, either AI or real art, they have tons of people on there who will do it for you. If you want to have pe you know, your board games video like uh I do videos on there. Like people do like gameplay videos and all sorts of stuff. People make like 3D miniatures on there. Three people. Okay. It, it's okay, called so Fiverr because like people Etsy? would pay five bucks for something. Like, like I, yeah. I need to do an intro animation thing for my video channel. And it was okay. stuff that they had all programmed already. And they just had to like change, like the things with the whiteboard, when it would like write the things yeah. on the whiteboard, that old stuff. That That's like Fiverr, like the beginning of Fiverr where it started. But now, People charge more than five bucks. But that's when it's called Fiverr. Uh, it used to be five bucks. Okay. I see. It's close. Oh, that was it's the origin like of Etsy. it. It's Etsy, but digital? Like Etsy digital thing? Yeah. Kind of. Sort of. Yeah. Okay. Oh, maybe. It's, just, it's, it's a fun website just to check out to see all the different things people do for you. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's a. I think that's why we were talking about a little bit earlier, like the. Uh, the board game like, stores to new people here? like those cops i think I, I had a friend of mine say that it was like going into a like a toy store and just finding all these new toys that you never even knew existed <laughs> i think i feel like because that's because I, I i get the oh yeah look at that nerdy stuff 
but I think just being like surrounded by all of it, just in its glory, like all the different games and all the different elaborate components that, you know, depending on how extensive your board game knowledge is, are just going to completely blow your freaking mind. You know, like you go out, you walk by ice cool or something like that as someone who hasn't played something past like Scrabble or sorry or Uno. And you're like, what the hell is this? All these boxes are locked together by like, wooden fish clips and you're flicking stuff like uh, <laughs> i think that's i mean that's just how i see it like it's just yeah. i think that's what people see when they just first get into the board game hobby and they get immersed in something like that i felt like that when i went to uh the lucas stadium in gen con it was hmm. like walking in there and seeing the stadium full of gamers it was crazy well one of the guys that i went to uh to target and we went down the games row and he was just like blown away just like oh my god like there's how many yeah yeah have any of you guys been to essen one time that's pretty that was pretty cool lance was, lance was there they put him on the cover of a game ah <laughs> <Got it. laughs> <laughs> oh, the good old days <laughs> all right um <laughs> Hey, next week, uh, Forrest, you better show up because we gotta, we gotta. Well, actually, it can be next week and week after. We gotta do our WrestleMania predictions. Man, that eighteen-minute rock promo! Holy shnikes! Oh God, can he? He can still. I mean, how are how are is he going to get over as a heel, man? I mean, like people oh, do some. What it's so I, good when he when he busted out Moana. Oh, that was when I when I when I hand your mother this belt. That'll be covered in your blood. I'll lean down and I'll whisper in your ear. What can I say except you're welcome? <laughs> he just, I mean, the, uh, oh, have you watched like the promos? He uploads himself where he isn't censored. And he's just like, listen here, you motherfucking piece of shit. <laughs> you know, it's like, you go find those on, on, he puts those up on YouTube. Where he basically does his uncensored promos and pretty much the exact same promos that he did before. So you get them both. But yeah. My uh, early guess. This is what my early okay. guess is. So those of you who don't follow wrestling, none of this will make any sense to you whatsoever. Nobody cares. I just like <laughs> yeah, I really, really billion millions upon millions of people across the across the globe. Nobody care. in this chat room cares. Of course not. <laughs> I do. I care about I that Irish. Like, What's so here's Irish here's girl? here's my theory. Becky Lynch. So you 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 there's a new you, Irish girl too. You bring back you you that was that was great that he it's like when he was saying the song about Seth Rollins about his wife being more popular than he is and stuff. Oh, That's that was it. so good. That was so good. But anyway, um, no. So here's <laughs> so here's here's what I think is going to happen. So they have the match on the first night, tag team, Seth Rollins. And um, and Cody against The Rock and Roman. If The Rock and Roman win, Cody Rhodes can never wrestle for the championship ever again. And because Rock, since and since Rock is on the board of directors, whatever he says, I'm in charge. I can make that happen. You'll never wrestle with it. So you know he's not going to lose, right? I mean, it's just like because he's got to have his match. The Sunday later. But if they win, the bloodline is barred. Roman Reigns' group, they are barred from being at ringside. And if they interfere, Roman Reigns loses the belt to Cody Rhodes. He can lose the belt through interference. All right. Sam. What I think is going to happen, because I think that Roman's going to lose the belt. For yeah. sure, right? He's going to lose so. it to Cody. Cody's going to have the belt. What do you do with Roman then? What does he do? Like, what's going to happen is that on Saturday night, Roman's going to betray... No, I mean, The Rock is going to betray Roman so he can take over the bloodline. And so he loses... And that'll be like... And then after that, Roman will, like, like you know, the tag... Reach up to tag him and, and Rock just puts his hands up and let's Roman get pinned. So he's got to wrestle by himself the next day and he loses he loses the belt. 
and then uh and then Roman then goes after the bloodline. That's how you that's how you have Rock and Roman still stays something without the belt and around his waist. And so then they will they will they will feud and then Cody will go off and I don't know. I have no idea who what his next rival will be or anything like that. He's 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 probably gonna start the NWO. <laughs> I wish. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> oh well, here's a here's a little gem. The Rock's uh, next movie starts filming in May. Granted, I don't see why he couldn't shoot around it, you know, well, especially it, if it's it, only spots, you know, like fifth. Well, and they give Roman time off, right? They give oh Roman yeah, Todd's Roman time. time off. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been you know he's been in front of the camera for a while. But anyway, that's that's my theory. That's my running theory right now of how. They're gonna roll with this because they're gonna have to continue the bloodline and they're gonna have to continue something with it. Because the bloodline's a good, 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 good group. I mean, they're they're a, they're a fun. I just group. got the um, I just got the Hulk Hogan pop at the store today. So if if you guys collect pops or whatever, there's a Hulk Hogan one out there. Oh yeah, just, yeah, it just came out. <laughs> I uh, I met him. Nice. Uh, many, 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 many years ago, when WCW was still a thing, I worked. I think I've told the story before, but I, uh, I worked at Sturgis Bike Rally back when they had the WCW Hog Wild uh, pay per view when they wrestle at Sturgis, and and after the pay per view was done, it was like the last day of Sturgis, and we were tearing down the tents and stuff, and uh, and we all just kind of looked up, and there was Hulk Hogan just wandering around. And we were just like in like in in like basically this kind of like weird backstage area kind of thing. It was weird, and it was like one of those things too, where I like I was like, "Holy cow!" And my buddy said, "Holy cow!" And I was like, "Well, I gotta say something to him." And he's just like, "Yeah, but how do you talk to the most famous wrestler of all time?" And then we saw some guy that we knew walked up to him and say, "Hey, Hulk Hogan, big fan." And he's like, "Well, thanks, brother." And just shook his hand and walked away. I was like, "Okay, we can go talk to him. He's cool. <laughs> That's what you say. Yep, and so yeah, I just walked up and I said, "Hey, man, I really appreciate you know, yes, I I watch I watched you I watched you for years. It was pretty amazing." And then he's like, "Oh, well, thanks a lot, brother. I appreciate you." And just and then like and then I remember I asked if I get a picture with them, and I got a picture with them. And then this is for cell phones and stuff, so you had to get an actual camera out and take a picture somewhere. It's that, funny. That, yeah, it's funny because it, it, that's what I did with you when I at Gen Con. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> No, and then I remember, and then I, and then every single time he took a picture, he he had a beer in his hand, and every single time he took a picture, he either put the beer down and put it behind him yeah. so he couldn't see it. And yeah. then now my my brain says he didn't want to give anybody free advertising, right? He didn't want to give Miller Light free money, yeah. you know, from a picture. But he said, "Why?" I said, "What are you doing with the beer?" And he's like, "Well, I don't need some some little Hulkamaniac seeing that and thinking it's okay to drink beer because Hulk drinks beer, you know." And I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." And then I asked him, I said, and then we took a picture and I said, can you, can you put me in a headlock and I can take a picture? And he's like, oh, I know you probably wouldn't do anything to try to get money out of me, brother. But, you know, all of a sudden you get that picture and a month later you tell me that your neck hurts and <laughs> I, and I got to settle out of court for a hundred thousand dollars. Oh keep, my God. Quiet. And I was just like, I, th I think I told this when you told us about this whole Hogan thing once before, I think I told you the Gordy Howe thing. So, Gordy Howe, if you have a picture, if you ever met the man when he was alive and took a picture with him, chances are, I'm, I'm going to guess about 90% of the time in the picture, he's giving you an elbow to your chin. Because <laughs> it was one, because he was famous. They'd always say that, you know, he would just knock guys, like give guys elbows along the boards and everything. So if you talk to him and like, can I get a picture? And he's like, yeah. And he'd go, ready? On three. One, two, three. And he'd go like this. <laughs> I have one somewhere of him with his elbow up in my <laughs> chest. That's cool. Like, he didn't hit me or anything, but he just like just sticks it up there like that. And like it's hysterical because at the time yeah. he's probably like 70 years old. He's giving me an elbow in the chin. Crazy. Should sue him for assault, but he's dead. So. Oh, too late. Yeah, didn't think about it. Uh, <clears throat> that and Apple. We gotta remember. We gotta remember, we gotta remember to in July to make our predictions on the Tyson uh, fight. 
Oh, I mean, it'll just be a joke. But anyway. Tyson. I hope uh, Tyson, like, almost pummels him. He gets to wear headgear and all everything else. He'll be fine. What, do you wear headgear if you're fighting Mike Tyson? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I mean, I, I'm trying to remember how much money would I have to be paid a lot to, to last the 20, the, the, the 17 seconds that I'm giving would... yourself a lot of time, Lance. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I can go like this and, and, yeah. and go like this and, and for like 17 seconds. I'm pretty sure yeah, I can he'll go do like one this. combo, knock them hands out of the way, and hit you in the head, and you'll be on your ass. I'd be going like <laughs> this. Right? I'd, be, I'd be like, oh, you know, uh huh. I... <laughs> Even if the guy is what 60 now, he's gonna whoop 57. your ass. 57, 57. yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, he's um, he's he's a scary man. He's a fucking lunatic. What he? <laughs> you, see, you seen the you seen the training video of him? Like, like and like like they showed him training and like like literally. I mean, admittedly, he probably doesn't have the longevity like he did. But man, he was he it was needed. <laughs> he was he was swinging faster. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Have it, you seen Have you seen the trailer for the new movie he's in coming out? No, no, uh, it's a. Uh... So there's a movie with Sean Penn and oh my god, I can't forget the other actor's name, where they play paramedics in New York, hmm. and Mike Tyson is the um, the firehouse chief. Oh, okay. And like either they digitally removed or what makeup they removed all his face tattoos and everything. Hmm. But like I saw the I saw the trailer and I'm like, hold on a minute, I had to rewind it. Is that a Vader Holyfield? Like, is that, is that- <laughs> It's amazing how him and Evander Holyfield look a lot alike now that they're older. (laughs) If it were for that face tattoo. Although one's missing part of an ear, but... (laughs) I haven't been able to get the mic bites in a while. I wonder what's going on with that. They used to have the weed gummies and the mic bites to be in the shape of ear with it. Piece bitten off at the bottom. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I gotta go to bed, guys. We can't, right, goodbye. We can't, quit, quit, quit trying to convince me to keep talking, Luca. I'll keep sending you the uh, the, the invite. You just you just gotta show up. No, that sounds awesome, man. Thank you very much. All right, take care, I, brother. I had a blast. It was fun. Thank you. Good night, Luca. Good night, Jessica. Good night. Good night.